Happy Tuesday. It's time for coffee and cursey words on a on a Wednesday. I'm so used to saying happy Tuesday. I honestly forgot for a second that it was Wednesday. That's embarrassing. Happy Wednesday. <laughs> it's time for coffee and cursey words because I didn't have internet yesterday, but that's okay because I really thought we were moving on. I had a whole show prepped that did not have the words dep or heard in it. Um, and some of that stuff's just going to have to move to Friday. I'll tell you quickly the stories I'm also looking at, but these interviews, man, we just need to have a conversation about them because there can be legal ramifications here. And I talked about that when Alec Baldwin sat down with George Stephanopoulos with regard to the rust tragedy, um, and I was like, okay, we just, these things have legal implications. And so we need to talk about it. Like we need to talk about the legal side of this and break down these interviews. So with that, we are going to get into it. I'm not even going to do a quick bits today. I'm going to tell you the other stories I was looking at and let you know that those are coming. And then on Friday, we are going to do a full show of other stuff. Yes, I am aware that this full interview is going to drop while I am live on Friday. I'm not going to go through the full hour. If there are snippets from it that I think are important, I will address them over the weekend in shorts. I have a shorts channel, um, the Quick Bits channel. And if you aren't on the Quick Bits channel, I'm just going to show you where it is. And the mods will place a link. But I did a quick bit on this yesterday. And I think that that is the easiest way. If we need to talk about it more, then I will let you know. Um, for those of you that are over on Patreon, there will be a Patreon members only live tomorrow. That's an AMA because we hit a subscriber goal over there. So that's at lawnardsunite.com. But for those of you that are interested, Emily, is your screen sharing ready? No. Did you know you're sharing your screen today? Yes, but also... <laughs> So the reason I share the quick bits is because for those of you, hey, we're at like 75,000. Look at us on the quick bits channel. Um, this is where I put this yesterday, but I also put these up on Instagram reels and I put them up on TikTok as well. So whatever platform you like to watch on for that short content, I try to put it wherever you like to watch it. So with that, um, we are, we are breaking it down. So once I see the one hour interview, I want to see it first and then we'll go, then we'll decide. So I'm coming in with coffee. I'm trying out a new lip gloss today. We're going to see how that goes. I normally don't try things out live for the first time. We're just going to see how it goes. And if you guys do want to go subscribe to Quick Bits, I mean, I guess the Quick Bits channel is on the road to 100K. Girl, look at us. Look at us go. Look at us go. All right. And with that, Oh my goodness. I'm going to roll the intro. I'm getting a phone call that I have to take because I'm supposed to have a new dishwasher delivered today. So let's roll the intro and hope I can do this all at the same time. Okay, ready? Go. Hey there. If we haven't met yet, I'm Emily D. Baker, the badass lawyer and everyone's favorite legal commentator. I'm the host of The Emily Show and I break down the legal shit behind the news and pop culture stories we all want to talk about. I have been a licensed attorney for over 15 years, but this is not legal advice. I should warn you, I'm a big fan of the cursey words. This channel is where the law nerds unite to talk about facts, not fuckery. <laughs> so because today is a day of days... We had a window for a new delivery for a dishwasher. Our dishwasher uh, literally shit the bed. So it just, there's no fixing it. We fixed it like three times and we're like, there, we can't even do this. We can't even do this anymore. Um, our window got moved to today, which was supposed to be fine because I wasn't going to be streaming today. And then everything moved. So there is a like 30 minute window between when Dr. B gets home and the beginning of our delivery window. And no, no, no time in life ever, no time in life ever has anyone shown up at the very first five minutes of the delivery window. If the delivery window is from 
I don't know, 11 a.m. or 1130 in this case to two. I always assume someone's coming at like 345 and I've waited all day. That is how things worked for me in Southern California. In Middle Tennessee, people are like, oh, this is your delivery window. And they're like, hey, we're going to be five minutes early. Is that cool? I'm like, I guess so. Who's okay? We're just, we're just going to. We're just going to make it work. We're just going to make it work. So it's just, I still is not, I still am not used to things just happening when they say they're going to happen. So I just, I just am here for it. You know, um, I, I've had them show up before the delivery. This never happened to me in Los Angeles. Never, ever happened to me in Los Angeles that I had a delivery window. Um, people show up before the delivery window ever. And I saw somebody ask if I had a lip piercing. No, but I have, um, I have had lip injuries playing water polo more than once. So with that, um, the just, oh man. Oh, well, I'm very excited. Um, though it's been a great lesson in teaching my children how to hand wash dishes. We only had one casualty. I feel very blessed by this. So, you know, we're going to just keep moving. We're just going to keep moving. We have so much to talk about today. I think I plugged the QuickBits channel. I remember doing that before we rolled the intro. You guys are letting me know where you're coming in from and what you're drinking, um, you know, here in here with the coffee. I'm going to tell you real quick the other stories that we're tracking just so you know what's coming up. And then at some point, we're going to have to talk about whether we just do a daily, like one story a day type of a thing instead of doing like mega live streams. Though I really don't think even if I did one story a day, they would be less than two hours. And that's a consideration. (laughs) That's a consideration. That's a consideration. Hello over on the Facebooks. We see you there too. Newfoundland, Canada, um, at work, Austin, Texas, drinking sparkling water. My favorite of the waters is the water that is extra sparkly. I like my water sparkly. I like my water sparkly. Hello, Thailand and Quebec and Puerto Rico. I see all of you all. It's so good to see you. Um, was the casualty, the dish or the kid? (laughs) Debbie. That's a really good question. Just one dish. And it wasn't even like a full dish. It was just like a bread plate. And we're like, all right, my husband and I have realized that as we're coming up on our 20 year wedding anniversary, that a lot of the things in our home we got for our wedding to it 20 years ago. So now we're like, hey, maybe it's time to do some new things. The plates though have held up incredibly well in that 20 year period of time. We got married in Southern California. We immediately packed everything we owned into a U-Haul and drove it up to Seattle, Washington, where I started law school. We were there for a year due to a lot of circumstances. We ended up moving back and I transferred law schools, but we ended up moving back to Southern California. So we moved from SoCal to Washington, Washington back to SoCal. Once we moved back to SoCal, we lived in multiple different places in our city um, of El Segundo. So we moved back from Seattle um, across from a bar called the Purple Orchid. That's a story for another day, but it was a delight. It was just a delight living across the street from a bar called the Purple Orchid. Then we moved down the road in El Segundo to our first property that we owned. Um, And then we moved to our home in El Segundo. And then we moved um, here to Tennessee. So those plates have moved six times and we have barely had any casualties. Um, yes, it's that El Segundo. It is the, I left my wallet in El Segundo, El Segundo. So that's how many times these plates have moved. I can't even believe it. So to lose one to, um, you know, to, to dealing with it is, is fine. Hello from Sofia, Bulgaria. Good to see you. All right. We are going, I'm going to tell you, I said I was going to tell you, and then I'm going to like wander on to stories. I don't mean to, I don't mean to. Here were the two, two of the stories I was going to touch about today or touch on today. And I'm not going to get to first, first that Geico case. Have y'all been, have y'all been hearing about this Geico case? The individual that sued Geico because they caught HPV in a Geico insured car. So it's a fascinating story. Geico was ordered to pay over $5.2 million to the individual who was suing over, sued Geico over the insured. 
You guys are like, what? So for those of you that didn't hear about it, we'll just do a quick, a real quick touch in because we're getting into this Friday. Individual individuals have adult relations in a vehicle. It is not an uncomfortable vehicle. It seemed like a very nice vehicle. Um, NPR even put a photo of the vehicle. It was a, <laughs> it was, it was a Hyundai Genesis. It seemed like a roomy vehicle. So they had adulty relations in the, um, in the Hyundai Genesis. The Hyundai was insured by Geico. The individual asked Geico to settle the case for policy limits of a million dollars for contracting um, HPV because it arose well in the car. So then Geico said, no, this didn't arise. The damages claimed did not arise out of the normal use of the vehicle, which again, challenge, <laughs> like, how are we just, how are we um, deciding normal use of the vehicle? Because, hmm. So they go to arbitration. The arbiter awards the individual $5.2 million. Geico appeals it. The appeals court was like, nope. And there is an entire other lawsuit still going on between the owner of the vehicle, who is the one who had HPV in, it seems from this case, knew that and did not disclose that to their partner, which is a whole different conversation. Disclose it. Have conversations. Did not disclose it to their partner. And so the lawsuit's going back and forth, but it seems like Geico might have to pay out the $5.2 million for the damages that arose out of the car. The argument being, it's that the insured had personal liability arising out of negligence and actions involving the automobile. So knowing that they had HPV and involving in the car and then the person contracted HPV and then and then went after Geico and it looks like Geico might actually have to pay 5.2 million dollars i have never even thought i would never have even thought um i would never have even thought that this was a direction to go with automobile insurance but it looks like this might be an this might be an opportunity <clears throat> for lawyers to say hey <laughs> what happened in the car doesn't stay in the car we can go after the car insurance i wonder what's going to happen with homeowners insurance i'm very curious so there is now a deep dive and the deep dive is going to be um is going to be interesting because there is an ongoing lawsuit that is scheduled for trial Yep. So I'm going to do a deep dive on that on Friday to take a look at the, not just the implications of this with insurance, but this is some creative lawyering. So, you know, um, the individual said that the man did not tell her of his health diagnosis and that, um, he knew that he had HPV, which they can prove and that, this unprotected adulty behavior, we can say sex, are we? Okay, we're 13 minutes in, we can say sex. That this unprotected sex in 2014 caused her to contract HPV, and here we go. So, Geico, Geico, Geico. This is going to be a very interesting case, not just because it's a kind of a novel case, but I've never seen car insurance used this way, ever, ever. And what happens to homeowners insurance? And are people going to start going after homeowners insurance for things like child support and spousal support? And I, 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 I'm very interested to see the way that this goes. The, the lawyer that was like, this is a great idea. Um, I appreciate that. I appreciate that. So yes, he did have throat cancer. So he knew, he knew that he had HPV. Well, the appeal, the initial appeal, Lisa has been denied. They denied it like two days ago. So the um, the court in Missouri, the Western District of Missouri, uh, denied the appeal and was like, no, boo. You, <laughs> naked, 
negative ghost rider, the pattern is full. So we're going to go through that appeal, but there is still another case pending about this. Woo boy. Speaking of negative ghost rider, the pattern is full. We went and saw Maverick. Um, I tend to try to take a little bit less time on social media over the weekend and then no time on social media on Sunday, sometimes no time on the interwebs on Sunday. And we went to go see Top Gun Maverick. It was so fun. Like it was just so much fun. I love that there was more representation that they included a female fighter pilot. I just, I thought it was great. I thought it was just a delight. It was just a great summer popcorn movie. So American Rose Design is asking, how is that Geico's fault? It's not Geico's fault, but that's the thing of car insurance, right? Geico doesn't get you into a car accident. You get into a car accident and then they insure you. So this is not Geico's fault, but they're saying it's the insured's fault. And it happened in a car. So just like you can sue over injuries from a car accident, can't you sue over injuries from negligent use of a vehicle? So just like a car accident is not the insurance. That was loud. Just like a car accident is not the fault of the policyholder. Neither is this. That's what they're saying. Or not the fault of the insurance company, the fault of the policy um, holder, but so is this. Anyway, so I enjoyed Maverick. Um, it was a perfect popcorn sequel it followed the formula this is what i enjoyed about legally blonde too just follow the formula give us those little moments that we want <clears throat> i just i just i just want to see it so with that we are going to um no the individual did not seem to be driving the car while they were engaged um in in adulty activity which is not recommended um it can be these things can be dangerous don't do this. And I, Sorry, I'm still not sure about Siri, that. I'm not sure about that either. Don't engage in adult activities while driving. Um, so we are going to absolutely get into the Geico case more. We're not going to have time today because we have so much to do. So we will be doing a more deep dive into the Geico case and liability and issues of liability and novelty in, in, in lawyers and the trial that is pending, the trial that is pending. But it seemed that the car was parked at the house. Do you go after the homeowner's insur insurance too? I don't know, I have questions. The other case that is getting ready to be heard or was is getting ready to be heard by the Supreme Court is that Andy Warhol Prince photo painting case. So there is a famous photo of Prince. I think the photo became famous after the Warhol painting, but a famous Warhol painting of Prince that was taken from a photo. And it is a very interesting copyright case that is going up to the Supreme Court, whether the painting by Warhol is transformative use of the photo of Prince. And so we're going to be getting into that a little bit more now that they have actually written the initial briefing to the Supreme Court about copyright and fair use. It's something I'm always interested in covering, and it's a really great uh, photo. And it's a really great painting, but is just taking a photo and painting it transformative use. We saw this with the Kat Von D lawsuit about taking a famous painting or sorry, a famous photo and tattooing it onto someone. Is the tattoo transformative use or not? So, so um, I know, I know that others have covered the Geico case. You all have been asking me to cover the Geico case for like two or three weeks. Um, whenever it dropped, my perception of time is whack. So whenever it dropped, I got tagged a bunch on Twitter when this initial um, this initial denial of appeal happened. So we will get into it. I want to get into the underlying lawsuit too. Like this is going, it looks like it's going to trial. Like I want to know. And with that, we need to get into our main story. Something is itching my nose. Something is itching my nose. Um, is Prince's estate handling the case? We'll get into that. I've covered it. Sorry. I've covered it in other content. Um, but the Warhol estate, it's between the Warhol estate and the photographer, not Prince. So it is, it is, yeah, it is that. And it is a copyright fair use case. And that's a very interesting topic because what is and is not transformative use matters. What I think we're going to do here today is transformative use. We'll, we'll see if ABC agrees, but I think it's transformative use. So we're going to keep going. I also, um, yeah, there, a lot happened this weekend. We're just going to get into these interviews. Here's what I'm going to say about why I'm talking about it, because normally we just cover 
trials, court cases, filings, and we're going to do the filing first um, before we get into the interviews. But I want to also talk about why, Emily, is the filing pulled up? No. I want to talk about why and how I choose to talk about things and when I choose to talk about things, because I think it helps you understand my process of, I'm not talking about this, but I am talking about this, because I've gotten asked, you're not talking about the January 6th hearings? Nope. Nope. Sure not. Don't know enough about it. Don't cover politics. Will I watch? Yes. Will I comment? No. Why? Because I can't be helpful. This, I can absolutely be helpful. So let's swoop and get into this topic and let's talk about tell me why. So when I started covering the Rust uh, shooting, I was really interested in seeing um, how that all broke down. We still don't have a resolution. We still don't know if there will or will not be any criminal liability or prosecution. It's a very interesting case. There are a swath of civil lawsuits that we will be uh, checking back in on because we need to know what is up with those cases, and it's been a while. But then I was stunned when Alec Baldwin decided to sit down and do an interview with George Stephanopoulos. I'm like, this is not a great idea. And so when I broke down that interview, I went through the things that could be legally impactful, the reason this is a bad idea when there's a pending criminal investigation. This is a little bit different. There isn't a pending criminal investigation. There isn't a pending anything really except maybe an appeal. And the appeal goes to the uh, the case, the underlying case. So when you look at an appeal, um, they are going to file it. We will see what grounds they're appealing on. I imagine it's going to be grounds of you made this ruling that's improper and you kept out this evidence and this should have come in and this witness should have testified to this and those types of things because it's saying that the judge made a wrong legal decision, not a factual decision, a wrong legal decision. And so with the judge using a wrong legal decision, the appellate court can look at it and be like, you're correct, that is a wrong legal decision, or negative ghostwriter, the pattern is full, that is not a wrong legal decision, that is a proper legal decision, and you can't appeal. So this can't impact the appeal. But I think it can have other impact because this is a very recent verdict and and I think there is some republication of defamatory accusations in there. And we're going to talk about that as we go through this. But first, let's get into did I swoop already? I don't remember. Let's get into the the filing that came down on June 10th first and then we'll go from there. What is today? June 15th. I know. I know we're days late, but. We're just going to bring it up real quick. A lot of y'all have asked me about it. And with that, we've got 36,000 of you watching. So do the YouTube things and we're going to get into it. Yes, they are prepping for appeal. Oh, what I will say, Emily, do you want to talk about appeals? Yes, I meant to do that. What I will say, they're prepping for appeals. With prepping for appeal, the appeal has to be filed within 30 days of the final judgment. The judgment isn't going to be final until June 24th. So I think they have until July 24th to file it. So I don't think we're going to see a notice of appeal just yet. We'll see what happens on the 24th when the judgment gets filed. And we're going to go with that. So um, this is the notice of filing. Defendant Amber Heard by counsel hereby provides notice of filing the following. So these are going to be things that are filed with the appeal. And we're just going to go through them real quick. So all the things that are going to be filed with appeal, they served uh, Camille Vasquez in Irvine and Ben Chu in DC from, you know, Rottenborn, who is from a different um, firm in Virginia, by the way, which is interesting to me, Woods Rogers versus the Charleston Bredehoff firm, Charleston Bredehoff, Cone Brown and Needlehoff. So those are all lawyers that work together. Rottenborn is kind of the odd one out that works at a different firm elsewhere in Virginia. I didn't realize that Elaine Charlson Bredehoff was married to the other named partner at this firm, the one named Charlson, but I thought that was interesting as I was going through this. So with that, let's take a look at what notice they filed. This is just getting ready for, for the appeal, for the filing of the appeal. The appeal court needs all of this stuff. So jury trial transcripts days one through 27. So all the jury, but these are all the other hearings where decisions were made. 
Um, what I want to do and have not had a opportunity to do yet. No, they have not lodged notice of appeal yet. I saw that in the chat. They have not lodged notice of appeal. This is the notice of filing of all of these transcripts. This is prep work. So this is groundwork for the appeal. And with that, they have asked for some of these hearing dates to be filed under seal. What I have not had a chance to do just because I did not have internet for a full day and I have not had time is to go through and see if I can find court rulings that are close in time to these days. I intend to do that and talk to you about what happened in these days near these rulings to try and see if we can figure out what is being filed under seal and potentially why. I would love to see all of these. And when people, it's funny because there's been a lot of discussion online. Emily, are you taking a tangent? Yes, tangent. There's been a lot of discussion um, online about, you know, how much YouTubers make and what have you. And well, I will bring that point around because I want to know how much uh, the Today Show and, you know, their, <laughs> and their, you know, their news outlet is making off of these interviews for NBC that's being drawn out um, over an entire week. I want to know how much Amber Heard got paid. I'm like, if you're going to count people's pockets, let's just count all of the pockets. But also providing legal commentary, Virginia, most things are free. But if these transcripts are not, your super chat money is going to go to pay paying for these because I want to see what the court filed. I want to see what was ruled on and I want to tell you what was ruled on. Because those aren't always free. So these are a lot of hearing transcripts. It looks like almost every hearing in the last two years on this case. Um, some to be filed under seal. I don't know what those hearings were about. We're going to look. This is a voir dire excerpt. I very much want to know what that is. That's part of jury selection. I want to know. I want to know what, 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 what happened during voir dire. So I hope that not all of these go under under um under seal no i know transcripts can be very very costly but that's okay that's what we're here for that's part of what i do i don't mind paying for the transcripts so y'all don't have to um so i'm very interested to see what these hearings are and i will go through and match them up that's that's something i meant to do yesterday and just simply did not have the internet to do it and could not do it from my phone hot spotting my phone yesterday was weak sauce probably because everyone in my neighborhood was doing the same thing in addition, defendant and counterclaimant files the deposition transcripts with proposed designations by both parties provided to the court and upon which the court ruled during the hearings on March 31st, April 1st, April 15th, April 22nd, and April 29th. So here's what this means. In these hearings from March 31st through April 29th, the court ruled about how the depositions that you saw in the trial would be edited. So in the depositions, and if you've seen the unedited or the uncut, the director's cut, the uncut depositions, if you've seen those, then you know that there were jump cuts and they have times at the bottom and the timestamps help. They have timestamps at the bottom and then they get cut up. That happens because in the depositions, the attorney, you know, for the party will make an objection and then the question will go on and the answer will come in, even though there was an objection. And then they will go into court while they are prepping for trial or in trial and say, your honor, you need to rule on all these objections from this deposition. And then they will edit out if the objection is sustained or granted, they will edit out that part. If the objection is overruled, it's noted on the transcript and that answer remains in. So I'm sure they're going to say, look, some of these depositions either had testimony kept out or put in that shouldn't have been there. So they want to have the um, transcripts from those, from those dates. And then the transcripts from all of those depositions. And then they have color coding of, and I imagine that the color coding will be who objected, who didn't object, or who, which party objected, what the objection was and what the court ruled on, and then what was cut out or left in. So key to objections, and then these are all the depositions. Deposition of Laurel Anderson, Amy Banks, Ellen Barkin, Robin Baum, Lisa Bean, Alan Blaustein, Jacob Bloom, Christian Cariano, Volumes 1 and 2, um, Connell Cohen, Candy, 
Davidson Gold Bond, corporate designee, CHLA, um, Stephen Duders, which didn't come in at all. Uh, I don't think this Laura Divinry came in, Terrence Doherty, Josh Drew, Aaron Filotti, William Gatlin, Eric George, Taylor Hayden, Tyler Hayden. I think that was one of the officers. Walter Hamada, Cornelius Howard. So they're going to relitigate all of these. Jennifer Howell, Volumes 1 and 2, Melanie Inglacius, Tracy Jacobs, David Kipper, um, Jessica Kovacevic, uh, Armand um, Lemoyne, Armand, Deborah, Deborah Lloyd, uh, Roberto Lopez, Joel Mandel, Elizabeth Mars, uh, Michelle Maloney, Tina Newman, corporate designee of Walt Disney, Brandon Peterson, Raquel Rose Pennington, Volumes 1 and 2, Alejandro Romero, Anthony Romero, Marie um, Sedana, Melissa Sands, who was one of the officers, Rami um, Saribi, to be filed under seal, Christy Sexton, to be filed under seal, Io Tillett Wright, to be filed under seal, which is interesting because I wonder what they kept out of those or let into those that is a problem because we saw Io testify. Monroe, Tinker, Adam Waldman, Laura Wasser, Jack Wiggum, Bruce Whitkin, Ben uh, Wisner to be filed under seal. And that's it. So a number of these are to be filed under seal. And I wonder why. Because that under seal means they don't want the public to see it. Sorry, I should have backed up. Under seal means that it will be filed with the court, but it will not be publicly available. The court has to approve that or not. But if here's my basic like gut reaction, Emily gut reaction. If you want to argue that evidence was kept out, that the jury should have seen that everyone should know, why do you want so much under seal? If you want people to know everything, then at this point, let them know everything. Pam said, can there be leaks? There should not be. Uh, there are rarely leaks in the court system. It happens. It is bad when it does. It's like the hospital leaking Britney Spears' private medical information. It's appalling if it happens. Um, if something's under seal, it should not be gotten by anyone. It should remain under seal. No amount of curiosity should, you know, override under seal. But the court has to decide if these should be under seal or if the public interest um overweighs or if the need for transparency overweighs and with all these interviews being given if i'm johnny depp's attorneys i'm arguing none of it should be under seal they're out there saying that the jury was duped and that the jury was persuaded or influenced you can't put all this under seal so you can file it you just can't file it under seal so with that um we will see and and i know some of you are asking you know did they file did they file their appeal yet no I think their notice of appeal will probably come somewhere in the month after the final judgment being entered in June. So the final judgment's June 24th, or should be, is on calendar now for June 24th. And then we will see um, we will see that being filed within 30 days of that judgment being entered. So um, can we go look at those items now before they are sealed? No, they are not filed with the court yet, so they are not yet available. They are being filed and the court will have to decide if they remain under seal. So no, that only works in something like the, um, the case with Wendy Williams when they weren't filed with notice of seal and then they ended up being, um, then they ended up being put under seal. So anyway, I need to, I need to let Dr. B know Best Buy should be here soon. Um, <laughs> and I can't text and, uh, I can't text and talk apparently not well anyway so with that we're going to jump into these two different parts it's about 20 minutes it's going to take a while and then we will get um and then we will get into questions i might pop questions up before we if if something catches my eye i'll pop it up as we're talking about this but i also wanted to say over in the text crew at textemily.com we had a number of birthdays today and those that responded to the birthday text so far and said thank you are Alicia, uh, Ashley, Brittany, Susie, Alexis, and Melissa. So happy birthday to all of you and to all of you in the chat celebrating your birthday. Happy birthday. We had over 90 members of the text crew have birthdays today. What? What? 
And when we put this poll up, like over 30,000 of you voted that you wanted to cover these, which is part of it. So as we get into these interviews, I'm going to make a few reminders. We are here to look at these interviews based on what is being said in relation to what we saw in court, if there's any legal repercussion going forward. But as always with our chat, and I know that everyone has covered this and there is room for all the conversations, but we are not here to disparage, besmirch, belittle, demean, name call, threaten Amber Heard. She is a difficult individual. Um, my patients have been thoroughly tested as I watched these real quick. Um, but we were able to find grace for yeeted spears. And if we can find grace in this chat for James yeeted spears, we can find grace for Amber Heard and still talk about whatever fuckery pops off in these interviews without ad hominem attacks on the person. So I know that that can be a difficult line to walk, but we all get to expand our, our, you know, we all get to expand our critical thought together because we can be critical of what's said without being super um, horribly critical of the person, right? There's room for a conversation, always room for a conversation. So with that, um, that's the way I like to do things. I know that that's not the way everyone does things. I will never tell anyone how to do things on their channel. We just do the things the way we do them on mine. These were on, oh, that's not cute. Mm -mm -mm -mm. All right. No, still not working. We, uh, these were on YouTube and then they weren't on YouTube. So these are coming from, uh, the today shows website. The quality is not great. I am going to keep these a little bit small because the quality just looks shit. It just does. And I get it. I get it. The today show is making a full meal out of this. And just while I'm not going to shade content creators for making money, I'm not going to, Today Show, get your bag. I mean, I realize that Today Show's bag is like billions, but <laughs> a year. Um, I get why they're making a meal out of it. I want to know how much they paid Amber Heard. I don't think that question will ever be answered. Maybe someone will investigate what they think that would be. I'm curious. But I, no shade, they're going to air all of this in a primetime special. So, of course, they're not putting out the highest quality clips. They don't want everyone else clipping it down. Everyone else is clipping it down. But they do want people talking about it. So, there's this like... There's this back forth about it. So let us, let us, you know what? I'm going to keep this a little bit smaller just so that the quality doesn't make me crazy. But this was on YouTube and then came down off of YouTube and is now on the website. And the quality on the website is just not ideal. Oh, let me pause this because I don't hear any sound. Let's make sure we have sound. And oh, there we go. It's I now have sound. So we're just going to go through these from the beginning and give commentary. And Lincoln. Ah, can we? Website is harder to use than YouTube on this. Gosh, darn it. Back, back that thing up. Thank you. More than a week since the verdict. As you sit here with me now, has it sunk in? How could it? Surreal. A week since the verdict, has it sunk in? Notice that she didn't answer the question. She said, how could it? How could it sink in? I don't know. She's fucking asking you, has it sunk in? No, it's surreal. Yes, it has. Instead of how could it? This is exactly what we saw in her testimony. No answers no answers that's how could it is still not an answer <sighs> and i'm off and away and i'm off and away how could it that no she's asking if it did she's not asking you to explain the process of things sinking in the evasiveness i do like the arrow earring i have arrow earrings maybe on friday i'll wear the arrow earrings i like the arrow earring uh no b i notice Okay, off and away. Nope, that doesn't work. And oh, the quality's difficult. improved. In part, yes. Um, this has been a long time coming. Do you stand? By What's been a long time coming? The trial, losing the trial, 
getting called out. I have a question about what's been a long time coming, but I am going, you all, this is on NBC, on the Today Show's website. If you want to watch this in full without commentary, we're just going to. I think Savannah asks fair questions, by the way, but that was not an answer. That was a word salad. I feel like word salad is where we're at. By your testimony and your accusations against Johnny Depp about abuse. Of course. To my- I'm going to back that up because Savannah's question gives context here to what she says next. And I've got, this is where my problems begin. I guess I had problems with the first answer not being answered. We also don't know where this falls in the interview because these are chopped up. Hopefully the interview has a little bit more fluidity. It's a long time coming. Do you stand by your testimony and your accusations against Johnny Depp about abuse? Of course. Do you stand by your defamation? Her answer was, of course. And this is where I begin to have problems because If you are still saying everything I said was true when those statements were defamatory, are we now republishing defamatory accusations by saying my accusations, which are now well known, are true? I think there is potential here that this is republishing defamatory statements. I don't know if Johnny Depp's team will choose to do anything about that. But this interview could have new defamatory statements that are tied and connected to what happened in the trial that are not protected or privileged in any way that could be relitigated. However, Johnny Depp's team might not choose to do that. They've already won. But I think we will see an injunction or a motion for injunction. If they want to, they might just let her go and see how bad it gets. They might let her run. Just be like, girl, talk your shit. We'll just wait. We're just gonna, we're just gonna keep receipts and wait. But they could also choose to get an injunction and go to the court instead of suing again, the way we saw in the Cardi B, Tasha K case and say, your honor, she's still at it permanent injunction from making these particular statements. And if she's talking and we'll get into the free speech stuff, but if she's talking about free speech now, she is not going to like a permanent injunction that literally says, these are the words that need to stay the fuck out of your mouth. And generally you can't pre enjoin speech. The remedy normally comes after the shits out of the horse but she's lost a defamation case. They can enjoin her from realleging the defamatory statements. They absolutely can, but they might want to see how bad it gets because this, I don't know if this will have damaging impact. Could it be defamation per se? Yes. But does this continue to have impact on Johnny Depp's reputation at this point? I don't think so, which is why I think an injunction makes more sense than trying to relitigate this again. I think Depp has already achieved his goal. I think his goal was rehabilitation in the public eye and having all of it out on the table. Look, this is everything. Decide. Because before this case, I didn't really care much about their divorce. I vaguely was aware of Amber Heard through um, this case coming after the UK trial. Didn't really pay attention to this much before the UK trial. Didn't really care one way or the other. Kind of just assumed that no one would make that claim. Um, without being able to back it up in such a public way. So I was definitely like, well, I mean, why would you lie about that against someone who has unlimited or seemingly unlimited resources to fight back? Because that would be, that would make no sense. And then this trial happened. I was like, oh shit, that's uh, that's not what I thought going into this. So if you're looking at the public like me, that's vaguely aware, I enjoy pop culture, was vaguely aware of this. And I'm now much more aware and I'm like, oh shit. Okay. Well, that's not true. You defamed him. And I think that that point's already been made. So relitigating this isn't going to help. I don't think relitigating this helps her public perception at all. I don't think it changes anyone's mind at all. I think those that are ride or die that Amber Heard has been treated unfairly aren't going to change. And those that are like, hey, we watched this whole trial. I mean, most of our minds aren't going to change either. Other than if you wanted to be left alone, just stop 
now while you're ahead. I mean, well, or stop before you're all the way behind, like stop like digging the hole any deeper. But with that, um, I think that there is a very big concern about redefaming Johnny Depp and perhaps Amber Heard feels judgment proof. I don't have the motherfucking money anyway. And if I don't have the money anyway, come at me, bro. Like, what are you going to do? Sue me again? Go ahead. Keep suing me. Fuck it. Go ahead. I'm never going to pay you. I don't care. So if she perceives herself to be judgment proof without a injunction, continuing to sue her just burns Johnny Depp's money in a pile, which is why the injunction might make more sense because then you can enforce the court order in a different way or multiple different ways. At the beginning of this, all of us are like, this is a civil trial. Nobody's going to jail. But if you start getting court orders and ignoring them, that might end up back on the table. And I don't think that's a place where Amber Heard wants to be. Why would you? In my dying day, we'll stand by every word of my testimony. And this this clip is the clip I'm attaching in a transcript to my motion for permanent injunction. Your Honor, she's never going to stop. Listen. In her own words. Accusations against Johnny Depp about abuse. Of course, to my dying day, we'll stand by every word of my testimony. The real life drama of the defamation case between Amber Heard and her ex-husband Johnny Depp captivated millions of people around the world. By the way, yes, captivated millions and millions around the world. Also, um, I am very glad they switched him to a ponytail. Because... The first week or so of trial, the hair down, I didn't love. I like that they've, they've, they pulled it back to a ponytail for the rest of the trial. It worked better. Amber Heard just got exposed. Johnny, you hit me. This is so cringe. With clips spreading across social media. They're only talking about TikTok, but they are clips on TikTok. TikTok was a little bit more, uh. A, a little more vitriolic. I don't know. I, I didn't see as much of that on YouTube. The clips tend to live on the TikToks. But I was so busy just watching the trial all day, every day, and giving commentary that I didn't have time to look at most of it. Yeah, like wildfire. I think vast majority of this trial was played out on social media. I no. Think... No. no. Okay, I'm going to let her finish. I'm going to let you finish. I'm going to let you finish, but then I got thoughts. Hold on. Already of this trial was played out on social media. I think that this trial is an example of that gone haywire, gone amok. And the jury is not immune to that. You think the jury's- Girl, this trial played out in a courtroom. 100% played out in a courtroom. It also played out on social media. But those are two separate things. But to say the jury's not immune from that, the jury took an oath. I, my husband saw none a clip of this trial. And I was covering it all day, every day. None. And he was still on social media. None. None of this trial. Because he didn't care. This trial could be avoided. It absolutely could be avoided. So again, trying to throw the jury under the bus is not going to go over well with the court. Gone haywire, gone amok. And the jury is not immune to that. You think- they are. Sorry, I'm big mad. You think the jury saw it. How could they not? I think even the most well-intentioned juror. Well, that feels a bit condescending. Um, the most well-intentioned juror, look, the jury took an oath. I'm sure there are plenty of plenty. Well, maybe not us. We love the YouTube things and the social media things. There are plenty of people that live in the world that give a flying fuck about social media and about what's going on between two celebrities in Hollywood. There are plenty of people who just don't care. And the jury took an oath and gave up six plus weeks of their life to do this case. I don't think they're going to worry about fucking it up because they just can't stay off of TikTok. It's so condescending and disingenuous. And 
it's just disrespectful to the jurors who spent their time. But we've continued to see that from Team Heard, that it's just like, how could they not? How could they not be influenced? Let's talk about hashtag justice for Johnny Depp and hashtag Amber Turd and hashtag Amber Heard is an abuser. The only reason the jury knew that is because your expert testified to it. Your expert testified to those hashtags you asked the jury to look you up on google you want to see who's getting more hate look it up on google you invited the jury in your testimony to go on social media in a completely inappropriate way and the judge did not step in and excoriate you in front of the jury for it though she could have she did not you you in your testimony Ask the jury to Google you and see who's getting the worst end of it. You brought in an expert to talk about it. And then you brought in another statement in your rebuttal evidence saying that people on social media are mocking me and making fun of my testimony. The jury never would have known that. Your attorney, Rottenborn, to his credit, didn't elicit that question. And you just had to tell the jury that they are making fun of me on social media. You invited this error over and over and over again. And then you're like, well, how could they have avoided it? You told them to go look for it. And I still think they avoided it because if they didn't, it would have come up. And you know what we haven't seen yet? A filing in court. The second that Juror 50 gave an interview with uh, UK media in the Maxwell case that evening, there was a filing by the prosecution going, uh, Your Honor, we have Houston. We have a problem. It was the same day. Juries are not to be fucked with. And if juries are doing things that are inappropriate, it comes to the attention of the court immediately. And Team Heard is beating this drum so hard. You know, the jury was exposed to social media. Okay. Well, they also were exposed to what you said watching this trial. But the jury was exposed to social media. If they had any indication of that, they would be screaming in a courtroom with motions flying, saying there's been juror misconduct. Have you seen any of that? No. None. Which means there's no basis for it. Which means it's disrespectful to the entire system. And again, your team brought it up. Oh God, we're only a minute in. It would have been impossible to avoid this. People- Not impossible. Do you, any of you in the chat have people in your life who didn't pay attention to this trial, didn't give a fuck and just didn't watch? I bet you did. There were people in my life that didn't care and didn't watch. Who still use social media? I mean, a lot of time Facebook, but. Know anyone like that? Know anyone who, uh, know anyone like that who just didn't care and avoided this whole thing and doesn't use the ticky talks? All of you are like, yep, 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 yep. I see you, chat. All of you. I see you. I see all of you. Online and crowds outside the courthouse made it clear where they stood. Every single day I passed for three, four, sometimes six blocks, city blocks lined with people holding signs saying, burn the witch death to Amber. Where? Wait, where? Where were those signs? Because not only was media covering outside of the courtroom and all of the signs that I saw from all of the media coverage were um, pro Johnny Depp signs. Yeah, I saw all of them. I saw one or two that were pro Amber Heard. I didn't see a single thing that was vitriolic against Amber Heard and the entire media was looking for that based on the headlines playing out during the trial. All of them. We had people, there are people in this chat that live in and around the courthouse. No one saw said, oh my God, they're making threats against Amber Heard on signs on the way to court. None of the media picked it up. You don't think Court TV, Chanley Painter would have been out there being like, this isn't okay. Rob didn't see it. Runkle didn't see it. 
I, no one saw Burn the Witch. And if you're saying it's Burn the Witch, are you then acknowledging that Johnny Depp's text message was were just a fucking sketch from Monty Python? Because I feel like you're now parroting his testimony. All the signs I saw were pro Johnny Depp. I saw people booing her and then the media covered that every single day. And the media headlines were still very much shaming the public for not standing by Amber Heard. So if the media that wants to shame the public for not standing by Amber Heard had seen a single sign that was threatening to her, it would have been front page news everywhere. There's no way. There's no way that happened. There's there's just no way that happened. Okay. Also, that Monty Pi. I'm gonna have to go watch Holy Grail again. I just. Uh. After three and a half weeks, I took the stand, and saw just a courtroom packed, full, of Captain Jack Sparrow fans. Were they dressed in pirate costumes? How do you know they weren't fans of Twenty One Jump Street? Or just fans of truth, or just curious? or just lawyers who wanted to be in the courtroom. Because by the time she testified, the lawyers are like, the lawyers were like, we need to see how this jury is reacting. Um, I think it's also belittling to just say that the entire audience are fans of Captain Jack Sparrow. Captain Jack Sparrow is a character. I definitely think there were Johnny Depp stands there. Hardcore Johnny Depp stands. There were, absolutely. Um, And there were times that they laughed when he testified. There were times where there were, um, you could hear rumbling in the courtroom. You could hear kind of titters in the courtroom. But inside the court, no one was in costume. Outside the court, there were. There were alpacas outside the court. And there's a conversation about outside the court as well. But there were fans of hers too. Not as many. I don't know if she has as many fans. She's also not been in the public eye nearly as long as Johnny Depp has. But I think that there's a whole lot of condescension just kind of dripping off of Amber Heard with like these people. They're just fans of Captain Jack Sparrow. What about Willy Wonka? Is Willy Wonka not allowed to have fans? All right, let's keep going. Who are vocal, energized. Can you put into words how that felt? This was the most humiliating and horrible thing I've ever been through. Here's the thing that's interesting. Okay, I'm gonna let her finish. Sorry. I'm just, I'm gonna wait till she and finishes this question. I felt this was the most humiliating and horrible thing I've ever been through. I have never felt more removed from my own humanity. Is she done yet? Maybe not. I, I, I felt less than human. Here's where I'm angry. Is this trial the worst thing that's ever happened to her? And if this trial is the worst thing that ever happened to her, what about all the testimony about the assaults? She testified. Hey, come on in. Are they here yet? Yes. Okay. Are you good? Dr. B's back. (laughs) Were they, they were so patient. Um, We're talking about this interview. Okay. Thank you. All right, so are you good? I'm good. You good? 45 minutes, I need to leave to take the train to somewhere else. Okay, just keep me posted. Bye, people. Bye, people. They're the law nerds, Dr. B. Bye, law nerds. Yay, things are are happening. So she described horrific abuse and sexual violence. It's interesting to me that... She is still saying that the trial is the most dehumanizing thing that happened to her because the things that she described are horrific, are dehumanizing, and she testified that those things left her with PTSD. So how are those horrific things that she described not the most horrible thing that have happened to her? How is it the trial? Trials are awful. Trials are are hard for victims. Trials feel gross to have to retell people the things that happened. 
but it doesn't minimize the underlying thing that happened. And all of the survivors in the audience um, can understand that the thing that happened is something that never leaves you. All of those that have struggled with PTSD understand that the PTSD thing is the thing that wakes you up at night, not talking about it. And that is, that's hard for me. Um, I think the, I think that she's accurate. I think she's telling the truth that this is the most horrible thing that happened to her because the things she testified to did not happen to her. And that's why this is the most horrible thing that's happened to her because she is being exposed to the world um, with evidence that goes absolutely against what she said. So this is the most horrible thing that happened to her because the things she described did not happen. Not the way she described them. And so with this, I think she's telling the truth. This is the most dehumanizing thing that's happened because people are looking at her and saying, girl, that did not happen. And that feels dehumanizing to her because she expected everyone would just continue to believe her because she is a woman, which is just some sexist bullshit. Um, we believe victims. We believe people when they tell us what happened to him or her. We believe people when they tell us what happened to them. And then when the stories don't match up, there is room for questions. Just like in the Josie Smollett case, then there are questions. All right, let's keep going. Let's go back to the, the day of the verdict. Savannah doesn't believe her shit either at this. Savannah's like, girl, bye. And yes, I know Savannah Guthrie is uh, a lawyer and her husband's a lawyer. But um, yeah, I mean, you see the way lawyers think. Savannah, I think, is being kind, but also firm. And I appreciate that. Verdict. Were you feeling confident? I just, I want you to pay attention to how long it takes to answer this question. Why does it take so long to talk about feelings? Like, Emily, how did you feel yesterday when your internet was out? <sighs> you know, it's a great question. I want to be able to tell you how I felt, but it was so upsetting that I couldn't be live with you all that I just, I don't have words. No, I woke up and I was like, fuck the internet's out. That's really annoying. How long is that going to take? I made a phone call one. Oh, that's going to take all day? Okay. It's time to let everyone know that the internet's out and reassess our day. And when I have feelings, I can tell you generally how I'm feeling. Sometimes I'm like, I'm having all the feelings and I'm having all the feelings. Why can't she talk about feelings? I felt less than human. Let's go back to the, the day of the verdict. She's like, girl. Were you feeling confident? <sighs> That's a great question. I wish I could say yes to that. I want to say yes to you, but it, would, it wouldn't be true. Even if you... I'm sorry. I want to say yes to you. I think she is still getting stonewalled from Savannah Guthrie's face because her face is just like, okay. I think she's getting stonewalled and is trying to pull Savannah in. I want to say yes to you, Savannah. If you weren't feeling confident, say I was literally shitting my pants because I had poured out my heart and my truth to seven people and my fate was in their hands. And it's terrifying. I want to say yes to you. If any of you have ever waited for a verdict, you remember the feeling. There's all of the feelings. Were you feeling confident? No, I was scared. I was scared that they didn't believe me. I was scared that it was never enough. I was scared that I had gone through all of this and he'd still fooled people. Something, something. I want to say yes to you. I can't. I can't. I can't. I can't. How did you feel? That's a great question. No. 
How did you feel? Scared, vulnerable, wrecked, nervous, angry. It's okay to have feelings. Say yes to you, but it would it wouldn't be true. Even if you think that I'm lying, you still couldn't tell me, look me in the eye and tell me that you think on social media there's been a fair representation. Is she talking to Savannah Guthrie or the audience? Do you find that? Who is she talking to there? Is she? I don't know if this is a cut. I don't you know if think this is a cut. Media? Is this a cut because she said, I want to say yes to you and Savannah still gave her nothing? Or is this a cut? I don't know. But she's like, I want to say yes to you. And then she bridges to talking about social media. What? You sit here with me now. Wait. Has it sunk in? Ah, that too far. You went back too far. Damn it. We flew too close to the sun. All right, hold on. I want to say yes to you, but it, would, it wouldn't be true. Even if you think oh, that's that not I'm lying, you still couldn't tell me, look me in the eye and tell me that you think on social media there's been a fair representation. Do you she is very hung up on social media and her portrayal on social media. And I don't know what that has to do with did you feel nervous waiting for the verdict? What does that have to do with the representation on social media? Social media is people acting at their worst sometimes. That's also free speech though. But how does that have anything to do with how you felt? The question was, how did you feel waiting for the verdict? Were you confident the representation on social media wasn't fair? What? Social media is mean. Okay. Ah, Emily's incompetent. Damn it. All right. Humiliating and horrible thing I've ever been. I want to say yes to you. I want to say yes to you, but it would. This wouldn't makes be true. no sense. Even if you think that I'm lying, you still couldn't tell me, look me in the eye and tell me that you think on social media, there's been a fair representation. Do you what do you mean by fair representation? And why are you snarling at Savannah Guthrie? And when you look at social media, the headlines I'm seeing are still headlines largely supporting you. If, if, if mainstream media, legacy media came out and supported someone in your position that was male, people would have their, I don't know, masthead. People would be outraged if, if, the media was still supporting someone who had been said to have defamed their partner about abuse. If it was not a woman media is still supporting her. And I don't mind the opinion pieces. People are allowed to have opinions, but the headlines are still slanted supporting you. So when you're talking about the coverage on social media, the coverage from the legacy media has been supportive still saying that the way you've been treated is unfair. Others on social media are fighting back and saying, that's not a fair coverage of this. And others are just taking the piss out of you because they don't like you. And that's social media. We don't do that here. We are law nerds. But when you want to talk about free speech, um, free speech has some real ugly parts to it. And uh, that means people can be dicks on the internet. Not in our chat, but people can be dicks on the internet. Do you find that Mr. Depp has proven all the elements of defamation? Answer, yes. After the six-week trial, the jury found her defamed Depp in a 2018 Washington Post op-ed in which she wrote she was a public figure representing domestic abuse. She never mentioned her ex-husband by name. Why do they keep talking about the fact that she never mentioned her ex-husband by name? That's how defamation by implication works. It's a law for a reason. It's not new. She didn't have to name him. Everybody knew what she was referring to because the ACLU made sure that it would have maximum impact. I'll come back to that point later. Name. Depp denied the abuse allegations in court. Heard one just one of three claims in her countersuit against her ex-husband. That verdict came less than two years after a judge ruled against Depp in a similar case in the UK. Not similar. 
I don't like this talking point about it being a similar case. It's not similar. The UK case is not similar. In fact, the judge in this case ruled that part of why the UK case ruling wasn't coming in is because it didn't fairly litigate these issues between these parties. Because in the UK case, Amber Heard was a witness. She was not subject to the same scrutiny and truth that she was subject to here. Not the same. Similar is is misleading in this context. It did talk about the difference between, it did talk about whether there was abuse between the two of them. But I don't think it's, Similar in that the parties are different, the standard of review is different, the evidence rules are different. Just that's my two cents. In which he sued a British newspaper that called him a wife beater. True. There was another trial handled it in, with the same, dealt with the same substantive issues. It's a tale of two trials, y'all. Even more evidence in. In fact, my. No. There was not, I'm backing up. I'm going to wait till she finishes her sentence. The issues that had even more evidence in. In fact, mine. I got to back up a little bit more. Sorry. It's harder when it's done on YouTube to back it up. Back then. Substantive issues that had even more evidence in. In fact, mine, my evidence was largely kept out. Really no. important pieces of evidence kept out. Done differently, handled differently by a judge instead of a jury. Some evidence is admissible. She's kind of elitist, isn't she? These jury people, they're all influenced by social media. Judges are also just people, by the way, who can be influenced by things. They're, they tend to be better at setting it aside. Um, but there are questions in the UK case. I don't think these large swaths of her evidence were just kept out. Wait a sec. Does Savannah Guthrie have three like me? Wait a second. Are we rocking the same kind of triangular piercing going on? I've got questions. I'm sorry. I'm getting distracted by piercings. Um, I love piercings. But it was handled differently because it's a different system. And it just smacks of it was a judge. Therefore, it was better. The evidence that came in in the UK was not more. She liked some of the evidence that came in better. But the evidence about Amber Heard's own credibility didn't all come in because she was not another party. She was a witness. So, no, I don't think more evidence came in in the UK case. Different evidence came in. Uh, Y'all, do I need to just go back through the UK case again and point out the differences? Because I feel like we just... If we're going to keep hearing this talking point of this is a tale of two trials, it's time to revisit the UK. Let me know what you think in the chat and in the comments for the replay crew. Replay crew, love you. I'm going to try to keep going. Damn, I've been talking forever and we haven't even gotten through the first interview yet. We're only three minutes in. Shit. Admissible in a UK court that is not admissible in a US court. Fair. Do you think that maybe he just had better lawyers? I will say his his lawyers did a, certainly a better job of distracting the jury from the real issues for some people a better job of distracting the jury from the real issues no what you said and was it defamatory is the issue they held your feet to the fire on that they said this is what she said this is what she said this is what she said over and over and over and over again those are the real issues it's a defamation case that's the issue People, they just were frankly disgusted by the whole thing and don't have much sympathy for either one of you. I don't know if that's fair. Can you understand that? Absolutely. I would not blame the average person for looking at this and how it's. Y'all, we're average. I don't blame the average person. Mm -hmm. Been covered and not think that it is. Oh, I need to back up. Hold on. Oh, I might be late for my meeting. Amy, if you're watching, I'm sorry. We're gonna, we're just gonna have to ride this till the end. I apologize. Person for looking at this and how it's been covered and not think that it is Hollywood brats at their, at their worst. I'd looking at this and way, the way it's been covered and thinking it's Hollywood brats at their worst. This is not like, I don't know. Hollywood brat behavior sometimes is 
uh, people having full meltdowns over multi-million dollar deals, though I believe artists deserve to be paid for their work, so I understand. Um, people, you know, getting into it with the paparazzi, people using an amount of drugs that would land anyone else in jail, things like that. Like, this is not bratty behavior. These are actually serious allegations. And some people were horrified that such serious and detailed allegations were coming out in public because it felt so much like it sh it just shouldn't be public. But after watching all the evidence from, um, from my perspective, this case was deeply, deeply sad, but I understand why it needed to be played out in public because watching the headlines be divergent from the trial has been very, very strange to see. And it seems like it's something that um, Johnny Depp was very much aware of when he wanted this case to be public because he had seen how the headlines had been. And I'm sure he and his team knew exactly how they would continue um, and have continued, even though we all watched the trial. But what people don't understand is it's, it's actually so much bigger than that. No, it's not. It's not bigger than that. This case is about you and your ex and who defamed who. It's not bigger than that. Stop trying to make fetch happen. It's not bigger than that. This is, uh, this is not only about our First Amendment right to speak. But here's the thing about the First Amendment. The First Amendment protects free speech. Yes. It doesn't protect lies that amount to defamation. Yes. And that was the issue in the case. Yes. Yes, exactly. You can't go into, the free speech does not protect you if you, you know, go into a crowded theater and you scream fire. Okay, we look. Look, legal scholar. The case that that analogy comes from, this annoys me so much. The case that that analogy comes from is dicta in that it was an analogy in a case and it's been overturned like 40 years ago. So when you're looking at free speech, this yelling fire in a theater analogy is a not law B overturned C not a good analogy because it is not actually good law. Do we need to do a deep dive in? I might, I might do a short on it about yelling, you know, yelling fire in a theater because that case overturned and there was dicta in a case ages ago, overturned 40 years ago, the case, God, I don't remember when the case, um, when the case was passed down, but I can do a, a short on it. But it was in a in a little bit of the case saying you can't go into a crowded theater and yell fire because it can create a panic. But in the US, free speech does not limit speech that can be um that can be difficult. It limits specific speech with regard to um direct incitement and imminent lawless action, but inflammatory speech, speech that can be hateful, that's not speech that's limited. So trying to use this analogy in an old case that's been overturned is just a misunderstanding of trying to say, no, there are contexts where you can limit speech. You can limit someone saying this in that circumstance. Well, imminent lawless action is where the incitement is, and that's where you can, there are constraints on limiting free speech but this yelling fire in a theater is not even a good analogy because it isn't actually how the first amendment works and the first amendment says speech should not be limited except and then there are very narrow exceptions including defamation because it's not true so uh, yes brandenburg is the case that overturned uh shank the case where that was dicta in. And Brandenburg overturned it in 1969. I just don't remember when Shank came down because my brain doesn't work that way. My brain does not remember. <laughs> my brain does not remember all of those lines somewhat 40 years before that. Anyway, but Brandenburg's the one that overturns it. And again, inciting or producing imminent lawless action is incitement. It's different than speech that is inflammatory. But go on. Go on, legal scholar Amber Heard. Tell me more. Tell me more about concept of free the concept of free speech, where it came from, and how it's used. But don't stop using the fire theater example. I'm gonna have to make a legal eagle style video and be like, "This is the case, and this was overturned." I'll do it. Don't don't threaten me with a good time.
<laughs> says Emily, the con law TA from a million years ago. Don't, don't make me, don't make me, don't make me go back. I'll do it. I'll go back to Shank. Was the issue in the case? Yes, exactly. You can't go into the free speech does not protect you if you, you know, go into a crowded theater and you scream fire. Uh, incorrect. We get the concept of free speech from the Greeks. My understanding of what that means. Thank you for the history lesson. I appreciate that. I actually enjoy the Greek Stoics very much, but okay. Means is not just the freedom to speak. It's a freedom to speak truth to power. Okay, look. The First Amendment does not say freedom to speak truth to power. And I understand that she is trying to like co-opt a larger type of a movement or a larger um, try to, to try to bring something bigger here and make this bigger. It's not bigger. Did you defame your ex-husband? A jury said yes. It's not bigger than that. And The truth is the word. Yes. And that was the issue. And that's all I spoke. Again, when we're talking about continuing to defame. And I spoke it to power and I paid the price. Sounds very much like her op-ed, but I commented on Natalie Lawyer Chick's, um, Natalie Lawyer Chick's Twitter about that. I spoke truth to power and paid the price. Sounds very, very much like her op-ed, doesn't it? Two years ago, I spoke up. Hold on. I need to quote it directly. I spoke truth to power and paid the price. Feels to me, just for me. I'm going to go read it. Hold on. because I, I quoted it specifically. Hold on. Where would it be? I'm not. Am I good at the Twitters? No. Um. Let's see. I spoke truth to power and paid the price sounds a lot like then two years ago, I became a public figure representing domestic abuse. And I felt the full force of our culture's wrath for women who speak out. Feels like the same vibe. And, you know, I think she's republishing her defamatory statements. To speak truth to power. The truth is the word. Yes. And that was the issue. And that's all I spoke. And I spoke it to power and I paid the price. In the closing arguments, the DEP lawyer said, called your testimony the performance of a lifetime and said you were acting. But she also said that in opening, by the way. They also said it in a press release. So they've said it multiple times. What do you say to that? Says the lawyer for the man who convinced the world he had scissors for fingers. Y'all, y'all, I fucking can't. I can not. We're just, we're going to, we're going to do this one more time because this is, she is trying to denigrate the argument by mocking Johnny Depp's career. And as I recall, there were a number of tapes. It might've, I shouldn't say a number. There was at least audio um, and I think we heard it multiple times. I don't know if it was different tapes. There were tapes of her mocking his career, mocking the roles that he had taken. And so to get up to now mocking Edward Scissor fingers seems to be trying to diminish the argument made. She didn't respond to the argument. They say you were giving the performance of a lifetime. Um, but instead she's going to mock Johnny Depp and his roles. L just listen to the way she says it. Says the lawyer for the man who convinced the world he had scissors for fingers. Scissors for fingers. Um, first of all, I thought it was Edward scissor hands, but also does she not know how acting works? Cause isn't your job is to play a character but I don't think anyone was running around going, why the fuck is Johnny Depp in court without scissor fingers or, or not a pirate or you know, what is this other than trying to mock the lawyer instead of answering the question? They say she was playing the role of a lifetime. If you played the role of a lifetime, well, maybe you wouldn't have lost, but you did. But trying to, this is 
just an ad hominem attack on being like the lawyer representing the man who convinced everyone he had scissors for fingers. That's not what happened. It's, it's a role. Do you live in a pineapple under the sea? Sorry, wait, Mira didn't live in a pineapple. That was SpongeBob SquarePants. Do you live in a castle under the sea? Under the sea. I mean, do, we, we know how roles work. We understand the difference between acting and characters and reality, but she wants to conflagate the two. She said once that this was an audience full of Captain Jack Sparrow fans, and then said that this lawyer is representing someone who convinced the world that he had scissors for fingers. No one's convinced he has scissors for fingers. It was a role. Are, do you really not know how acting works? She's trying not to laugh. Tell me she's not trying not to laugh. She's trying not to laugh and be more smug about this. The fact that Samantha Guthrie didn't laugh is just... Yes, why Johnny no scissor fingers in court? Exactly, I feel lied to. <sighs> this is just. For the man who convinced the world he had scissors for fingers? She's still just mocking him, trying not to laugh. She swallowed I'm the performer. A laugh. I had listened to weeks of testimony uh, insinuating that, or saying quite directly that, you know, I'm a terrible actress. No. So I, I, I'm, a, I'm a bit confused how I could be both. The de no, no, no. The testimony wasn't that you were a terrible actress. The testimony was that you were playing the role of a lifetime in your testimony. It was not that you did it well or didn't do it well. But the testimony wasn't about that. What's interesting is I think she's conflating the testimony in court and what she watched on social media. Because the testimony in court was really an opening and closing, and then her acting coach. They didn't talk about her acting much more outside of that. Social media did. But court didn't. Depp team argued that you were the abuser, that you instigated physical violence. Did you? I never had to instigate it. I responded to it. When you're... I never had to instigate it? is an odd thing to say when you're being asked if somebody abused you and why you were violent. I never had to. I didn't have to instigate it. He instigated it, and then we just, we continued. Okay, I'm gonna just try to let her get through this sentence. Did you? I never had to instigate it. I responded to it. When you're living in violence and it becomes, it becomes normal, as I testified to, you have to adapt. You say you were responding, but there are, is evidence. There are tapes in which you acknowledge hitting. There are tapes in which you say, I started I'm glad the fight. She asked. I know much has been made of of these audio tapes. They were first leaked online after being uh, edited. What you would hear in those clips are not evidence of what was happening. It was evidence of a negotiation of how to talk about that with your abuser. But I am looking at a trans. When did she switch to the third person and start saying that this is evidence of how you talk to your abuser? She didn't say her. Who's the one talking to their abuser in the tapes? Is it you or is it Johnny Depp? Because what you said is the tapes are evidence of how to talk to your abuser. Okay. I'm glad Savannah Guthrie keeps asking the questions transcript that says he says you start physical fights and you say i did start a physical fight i can't promise you i won't get physical again i mean this is in black and white i understand context but you're testifying and you're just telling me today context. i never started a physical fight and here you are on tape saying you did as i testified on the stand about this is that when your life is at risk when your when your life is at risk not when my life is at risk into the third person. This is teaching. This Amber goes into this teaching mode where it's like, let me explain to you how this all works. Hoping that people will then be like, oh, that must be what happened to you. But she doesn't say this is what happens to me. Not only will you take the blame for things that you shouldn't take the blame for, but Johnny when you're Depp in an abusive well. dynamic, psychologically, emotionally, and physically, you don't have the resources that say you or I do with the luxury of saying, hey, this is black and white. Well, if you have the resources, is it because you're not in that dynamic? 
when you're in that dynamic, you don't have the resources that you or I do. Okay, is that because you weren't in that dynamic then? Because it's anything but when you're living in it. But then there are other times, there's another tape where you're taunting him and saying, oh, tell the world, Johnny Depp, I, a man, am the victim of domestic violence. Ask the hard questions. 20 second clips or the transcripts of them are not representative of even the two hours or the three hours that those clips are excerpt from. Could your side have just put the whole three hours they in They did. Then? I'm not a lawyer. As I tell You're not a lawyer. I'm a constitutional law scholar, not a lawyer. Damn it, Jim. Um, those tapes are in evidence. Each side got to play the parts of these tapes that they felt was most beneficial to their side. But in the rule of completeness, they can play as much as they need to. Amber Heard's side could play as much of those tapes as they wanted to. The jury had them. I think the jury listened to all of them. I would have. I would have been curious as fuck. I would have been like, play the, roll the tape. I don't want to hear just what the lawyers played. I would have wanted to hear it all. But those were in evidence. And we heard it every time the lawyer said, I'm just playing this segment to this segment. The whole thing's in evidence. These were not edited down. They were in evidence. Your lawyers could play as much or as little of these as they wanted to. Don't relitigate this. We all watched it happen. Testified to, I was talking in those recordings as a person, an extreme amount of emotional, psychological, and physical distress. He and says he never hit you. He can't. never. Is yeah. that a lie? Yes, it is. Oh, boy. What about the witnesses who said they have seen you instigate physical violence. Okay, look, I am dig look, I am digging it. Is it on this year? I also have a trifecta of piercings. Savannah Guthrie, get it. I'm sorry, I'm distracted um, because I just, I literally can't with this. Um, I wonder with her calling Johnny Depp a liar about the abuse, how fast the motions will come. I've seen firsthand how people will file rank and support the person they depend on. Did they all come in and lie in court? Wait. Instigate physical violence. I've seen firsthand how people will file rank and support the person they depend on. Did they all come in and lie in court? I am not here to call any of his witnesses any names. I'm you called him a liar. I'm here to just kind of talk about it from what it felt like for me as a person who sat there. Your witnesses lived with you. Or they were paid experts. Your witnesses either lived with you under your roof. Well, Johnny Depp's roof. Your witnesses all lived with you at the penthouses. So how does this not cut both ways? I see how quickly people will file rank, whatever that means. Um, I think fall in line, but is that's the way I'm interpreting that. But file rank when they depend on you. All of your witnesses depended on you and tangentially on him because they all lived with you or were paid experts. He did bring in police officers, people who were no longer working for him, like Ben King, Who's, who's living clearly doesn't depend just on Johnny Depp. Ben King probably wants nothing to do with another American actor again. He's like, for fuck's sake, I'll go back. I'll go back to the Royals. They're less drama. Um, Alejandro Romero, who worked at the front desk at the building, he had witnesses that didn't depend on him for a living, including the police. Your witnesses all also lived off of you. So that goes both ways. When I asked his lawyers, why do you think you won? And the answer I got was because she never took responsibility for anything true. she did in the marriage. That's true. I did do and say horrible, regrettable things. You didn't testify to that. my relationship. Uh, I behaved in horrible, almost unrecognizable to myself ways. There's so much, I have so much regret freely and openly and voluntarily. No, you talked didn't. about what I did. No, I, I you didn't. I talked about horrible language. I talked about no. being pushed to the extent where I didn't even know the difference between, you know, um, right and wrong. That might have been more believable. I will always continue to feel 
like I was a part of this, like I was the other what? half of this relationship Where's because it? I was. What's happening? And it was ugly and could be very beautiful. Interesting. It was very. It's very interesting that she still describes it as beautiful. Um, to any survivors out there, I know that there are a lot of mixed feelings when getting out of abusive relationships. And most people are like, I understand what I saw at the beginning, but now that I'm out, all of it makes me want to barf um, or cry or all. Um, it's interesting that she's still able to describe it as beautiful. I don't understand the snarl. And she didn't testify that she was a part of any of this. We haven't even gotten to part two yet. Very toxic. Agreed. We were awful to each other. You know, I made a lot of, a lot of mistakes. A lot of mistakes. But I've always told the truth. Hmm. Hurts Lloyd. Interesting. Um, so this is just a recap from Savannah Guthrie. Again, I'm stuck on the earrings thing. I love it. I'm, I'm going to have to change. Look, I love it. I need a bigger earring up here. Maybe I, I love, I love it. So let's get to part two where we're never going to get out of today's live. We're going to just be live forever. But the way she continues to describe this relationship is interesting to me. Um, throwing the jury under the bus is not something I enjoy. Um, let's let's just let's just get to let's just get to part two let's just no stops no breaks just part two another eight minute clip let's go if all right ready let's go oh i should swoop ha we're gonna time stamp it part two we did things look wop darn it not wop no audio <laughs> emily we all we were so close girl we were so close so close back that thing up no back up i need to know what happens in those three seconds because these things are cut so close where johnny promises total global humiliation all right for let's you. back this up johnny promises total global humiliation for you do you feel like that came true huh Is she digging for emotion? Hold on. The, I didn't love the Johnny Depp text of you're begging for total global humiliation. I didn't. When I first heard it, I was like, oh, that's not great. But when I went back and looked, well, not went back, when we went through this trial and looked at everything that was said, I wonder how you take that text. Because in hindsight of everything I've seen, I'm wondering if that text is, if you try to prove this based on everything I know and you know, you are going to be humiliated because this is not provable versus a aggressive, aggressive, I'm going to destroy you. I'm going to humiliate you. I wonder if that text is a, you're going to humiliate yourself if you continue to try to do this. I just see it differently now. Living Sweetly, thank you for the very kind super chat. Um, as told to me by a brave DVSA survivor in court, I'm haunted by the ghost of the pain when I sleep. My unconsciousness awakes what I buried deep inside. Amber Heard's behavior stories are not congruent. Horribly, she continues to use the media and court to continue the abuse. She is continuing to drag this on. Johnny Depp said he wanted to move on and seems to be trying to. Um Brihanna 25 said, oh my God, thank you for noticing the don't have the resources that you and I may have thing. You are the only person so far I've seen who noticed that it stuck out to me like a blaring red light. She was not in that situation. She says she's not in that situation. She says, when you're in this situation, you cannot do X. You and I can do X, but one in that situation cannot. She absolutely made it clear that she was not in that situation. Totally agree. It, it again, red, like how fast can you wave red flags? So as we're getting into this, I had two takes on that text because when I first heard it, I was like, uh, uh. so uh, let it let us get into this. Um, some of you are saying that's how I'm understanding the text too, uh, that she would humiliate that she's going to humiliate herself. Yeah, it's it's interesting. At first, I was like, uh. and I think it is um, from over on Facebook, uh, Mag. I'm going to try to say Magdalena. 
thank you properly. Uh, I grabbed this and then it jumped global humiliation for both of them. And he really didn't want to hurt her. He knew he could lose. I mean, and I think he had to do this because, and I think this is humiliating for all of them. His texts are abhorrent. Um, the things he's been through are abhorrent, but I think it's also humiliating to go through. Yeah. My, my finger was severed and I was burnt on the face and I was doing these drugs. It's just, it's gotta be humiliating for everyone. All right, let's continue. We are not even into this yet message where Johnny promises total global humiliation for you. Do you feel like that came true? Do you feel humiliated? Hold on. Let me dig for it. I know he promised it. I testified to this. I'm not a, a good victim. I get it. I'm not a likable victim. I'm not a perfect victim. Victims don't have to be perfect. They have to tell the truth. And even if they're not perfect, people will be like, you're not perfect, but I see what happened to you. I prosecuted a case from a woman who was engaged in illegal prostitution in California and was trying to buy drugs. And instead of being able to buy drugs that evening, she was robbed of her money and beaten. She didn't want to come to court and didn't. The witnesses came to court. Not a perfect victim engaged in a whole bunch of illegal activity. Still, don't rob and assault people. Not a perfect victim at all. The witness, not a perfect witness. Super long rap sheet. Intoxicated, lifelong drug and alcohol abuse. Horrified that somebody would rob and beat up a woman. Horrified by it. Not perfect by far. In fact, we had to um, bring that individual to court because he locked himself in his home um, when he was subpoenaed to be in court and then ended up getting a bench warrant issued and getting arrested, coming into court and detoxing, or a little bit, um, overnight before testifying the next day. Not perfect at all. And when crimes happen in areas of criminality, people are engaged in criminality. They still see what they see. They know what they know. Not perfect. Just told the truth of what they saw. And it was a successful prosecution on behalf of a victim that wouldn't show up. So they say, um, or we said a lot, that when crimes happen in hell, and sometimes they do, your witnesses are never going to be angels. It doesn't make them unable to be witnesses. It doesn't make them unable to be believed. And I know that because I've seen it. So you don't have to be perfect. You have to tell the truth. I'm sorry. I'm so annoyed. I'm just so annoyed because she's trying to tell people, or at least, no, I don't know what she's trying to do. I don't know her motive. I worry that she is signaling to those that are afraid, if you're not perfect, this is going to happen to you. Johnny Depp wasn't perfect. He was believed. You weren't. Victims don't have to be perfect. They have to tell the truth about what happened to them and they have to have courage. And that is the hardest thing to do is to bear your truth and have courage. Sorry. I've just, I've, I've never seen a case with a perfect victim. Um, and I prosecuted for a long time. So no one's perfect. And telling the world that you have to be perfect to be a victim is a disservice to all victims. But I'm angry. I'm sorry. I'm normally not angry. I, I'm angry. When I testified, I asked the jury to just see me. And they human and hear his own words, which is a promise to do this. It feels as though he has. Amber Heard reflecting. Johnny Depp did not humiliate you on the ripple effects of her tumultuous trial with Johnny Depp. Having been found liable, are you nervous as we are here today about what you can say now? She should be. Of course. Yep. I took for granted what I assumed was my right to speak. Constitutional scholar heard. You have a right to speak the truth. You have a right to speak the truth. You have a right to speak the truth. Do you feel like you could be sued again by him for defamation? I'm scared 
that no matter what I do, no matter what I say or how I say it, um, every step that I take will present another opportunity for this sort of uh, silencing, which is what I guess the defamation lawsuit is meant to do. A defamation lawsuit is not meant to silence you unless you are defaming someone. Though what I will say is we have seen people use defamation lawsuits to try to silence. That is where anti-slap lawsuits come in. That is where I cover the anti-slaps in like the Ryan Kavanaugh H3, H3 case. You can see people use lawsuits and try to use lawsuits to try to silence people. Here's what happens if it's not defamatory. The people who are attempted to be silenced win. They win because it's not defamatory. And if it is defamatory, they lose because you don't get to tell lies. I would love to say that the court system is never used to silence people. It does happen. It shouldn't, but it does. Money plays a huge part in that. But you have the money to stand up for yourself. So does Johnny Depp. And here we are. meant to meant to take your voice it's not meant to take your but voice Amber it's meant to stop you from telling lies what the fuck just days after a jury stunned many and found the actress defamed depp in an op-ed where she said she was a public figure representing domestic abuse she said the piece which never mentioned depp by name was published oh my god defamation by implication it, it, it that's not a certain <sighs> why is it such the piece that never mentioned depp by name did anyone watch the aclu testimony when they talked about trying to make it more impactful, because I remember it clearly. Two years after the couple announced they had settled their divorce. Life had seemingly moved on and you decide to write an op-ed. Why did you do that? Because the op-ed wasn't about my relationship with Johnny. Girl, but girl, girl. You, you said in your testimony on direct, it was about Depp and others. And then you said it was about him in your rebuttal. You said you wrote it about him. And in your rebuttal, you said, this is why I wrote this about him. Because of what I'm experiencing in this court, this is why I wrote it about him. Y'all, now we're back to it's not about him. You testified that it was about him. So do you stand by your testimony or not? Because if you're standing by your testimony, you testified it was about him. But it alluded to him. It, it was unmistakable. You know, what the op-ed was about was, um, you know, me loaning my voice to a bigger cultural conversation that we were having at the time. Did you worry? Gosh, I'd love to be a person weighing in on these cultural issues, but that's going to stir this all up again. I obviously knew it was important for me not to make it about that's him odd. or to do anything like defame him. I had. Okay. I'm going to let her finish. Sorry. I was going to interject. I'm going to let her finish. I'm just going to let her finish. To do anything like defame him. I had lawyers, teams of lawyers review all the drafts of this. When you wrote. I had flying fucking fleets of lawyers review the drafts because I was worried it could be defamatory. If you're speaking the truth, are you worried that much about defamation? And we know from the back and forth with the ACLU that they wanted to have more impact. So they wanted it to heavily imply Depp. They wanted it to imply him as much as they could. They were skirting a line. I think the ACLU was skirting a line with the NDA she signed. She was skirting a line with defamation. That said, lawyers can't stop you from getting sued. To be fair, anyone can get sued for anything. So she had to know that there was a likelihood she was going to get sued. And we know that Johnny Depp sues people. It's not like he's afraid to sue someone. Um, you have to know that you can get sued over this and say, it didn't matter to me if I got sued. I was telling the truth. She didn't say that. I, she said, I had lawyers. So why would I be afraid? Because I had lawyers. You wouldn't be afraid if you were telling the truth. What she didn't say is, I wasn't afraid of getting sued for defamation. I knew I could get sued for defamation, but I stand by the truth. And I told the truth. I don't think she can say that now because it's been found that she, it was she wasn't telling the truth. But that's not what she said. It's the height of Me Too. Ugh. Legions of powerful men. I'm annoyed. Being 
canceled, losing their jobs. Um, did you want that to happen to Johnny Depp? Of course not. Of course not. It wasn't about him. You, tes you testified that it was about him. Ed and the abuse alleged was at the heart of the six week trial. Just pulls his arm back with the phone and throws it at my face. Hit me right in my, it felt like my, my eye. Heard testified that the final straw came after a violent fight in May 2016. Six days later, she filed for a restraining order. Six days later. I've got to talk about this courthouse in a minute. We're gonna, I'm gonna, I'm gonna hear what they have to say, and then we're gonna talk about Stanley Moss real quick. Cameras capturing her as she left the courthouse. It's her but Depp's lawyers convinced the jury heard was lying. Okay. Oh, uh, there's two parts to this. All right. First of all, Stanley Mosk has entrances that are concealed from the public. So you can get into the underground parking and there are entrances to the courthouse underground. Uh, you don't have to come in and out of the, the public entrances. And there are three or four, it's been a while since I worked at Stanley Mosque. There are three or four public entrances. There's one that goes out to like the atrium. Well, it's not really an atrium to the green space in between where there's a Starbucks that goes towards um, the hall of admin. There's one that goes down the street, one that goes up the street and one that goes out the other way. So there are four entrances and exits to Stanley Mosque that the public can see you walking around. And then there is a secured parking where you can get in and out where celebrities would come in and out. The floor I worked on did a lot of the family law cases. And so celebrities would be in the hall for divorce cases and stuff, never paparazzi up there. Um, I didn't see paparazzi outside. The first time I really remember paparazzi being at a courthouse where I was working in mass was Lindsay Lohan being prosecuted at the courthouse where I was working. Um, that's the first time I really remember. And it wasn't just paparazzi. It was news vans. It was, there's a picture on my Instagram. It's I think the oldest picture on my Instagram of a bunch of news vans lined up waiting. But how would you know which entrance they're coming out of? There are four. I doubt that TMZ had people at all four entrances and exits. Media wasn't regularly waiting at this courthouse at Stanley Mosque. It's a very busy courthouse. And so much happens, um, in this courthouse. So, I still don't understand how you know where someone's coming out. I don't think they had people because you see a line of reporters right at that exit. There are other exits to take. I, I, I truly, I believe Morgan Tremaine. I believe Morgan Tremaine saying this is where we were told to be. And we were told what side of the face. Um, and I absolutely believe that testimony. Because otherwise, how do you know what door they're coming out of? And if you're really worried about it, you can you can have your publicist or your lawyer contact the court and make arrangements if you even need to go to court your own at all. Cameras capturing her as she left the courthouse. But Depp's lawyers convinced the jury heard was lying about the abuse. Police who responded to the 2016 incident testified during the trial that they didn't see any injuries. I actually like seeing the pictures from the other perspective in the courtroom that we didn't get to see. I think that's, I think that's helpful. Um, Cause I remember seeing the big screen coming up and down, but I have not seen some of the pictures from this angle. Cause this is the witness box. So I like actually seeing the other peeks into the courtroom. Testified during the trial that they didn't see any injuries and that Heard declined to file charges. This True. was a, a hoax, is according to his team. Why didn't I cooperate with the police? She won on that count because the jury felt that the hoax claims made by Adam Waldman were not credible because it looks like from all the evidence she didn't she and her friends didn't mess the place up between the two rounds of police coming. So you won on that count. As I've testified before, and I will stand by until my dying day, I didn't want to cooperate with them. I didn't want this to be out. I didn't want this to be known. I didn't want to cooperate with them because I didn't want this to be, I didn't want to get him in trouble. If it was a hope. I don't know if she didn't want to engage with the police because she didn't want to get him in trouble or because 
they would say there's nothing there, but the police, by the way, the police were not believed by the judge in the UK. Um, so. Post, I could have done that. But five days later, you went to court and it came out. Five days later, I made the decision to stand up for myself and protect myself. You can't the the only thing that's uh, one of the things that's odd to me about this timing um and i would love to say that people never use things like this to leverage divorce but it happens but he was gone like gone out of the country gone um and was going to be gone for months so i just wonder what prompted the timing um of it and i also found camille's questioning very persuasive when it showed that she went and got the TRO because she wanted to change the locks and then had James Franco there the same night. I thought that that timing was very interesting. I hadn't put those things together um, because I hadn't looked at the outside evidence until it was all coming out in court. And Camille, I think, did a great job of lining out that timing. Can't get a restraining order in private, which, of course, I didn't understand the night when the cops were called. Restraining orders, though... In criminal cases, and I have not dealt well. Did they come across my desk in civil? I mean, I we've had plenty of restraining orders issued without the victim being present. The temporary ones, they do have to then be served, and then there's further hearings. But her attorneys could have done that. An employee of TMZ testified at court and said that TMZ was tipped off about when you were going to be going to the courthouse and on what side of your face bruises would be apparent. I need to go back and watch Morgan Tremaine's testimony and see if he testified about the entrances and if he was asked about the entrances, because there's a bunch of them. Did you tip off TMZ? I was going to say, he certainly didn't get tipped off by me or Did anyone in my... you know tip off TMZ? Why would they? Are no. You, you ask no. Who else is tipping off TMZ? Because Johnny Depp's team's not tipping off TMZ. Hey, your wife is going to accuse you of domestic violence. Let's tip off the media. I want to do that. As I testified to before, it had nothing to do with me. There are different incidents that you testified to, and the Depp legal team would put up pictures of you publicly right after that or in the days following and saying, that why are there no no bruises? Again, it's that thing. If you have bruising, if you have injuries, it's fake. If you don't have any, then it's then you weren't injured. No, that's not what it, this is an unfair reframing of this because it's not saying that. It's saying that the testimony that Amber Heard gave does not match the photos the day after. She did not say that he terrorized her and broke things and then the next day she had to act like everything was fine but she was living in terror. Psychological abuse is real. Um Coercive control is real. Those things don't always leave marks. They leave, well, not visible marks. They leave marks, just not visible marks. But your testimony was of very substantial and significant abuse. In Australia, she testified that her feet and arms were cut. I think she said to shreds with her feet on glass, but there was nothing the next day that she was pummeled with rings and then there was nothing the next day. It's not that abuse doesn't always leave marks. That's not the conversation. The conversation is that your testimony and then the photos do not match. That's the issue. Not that people can't be abused if they don't have bruises. That's not true. People can be abused and not have visible bruises and wear clothes that cover them and things. It's the level of abuse that she testified to where the abuse was testified to. And then the photos the next day, it's your testimony that doesn't match the photos. Not that all injuries, she is trying to reframe the question. And it's not, it's not that Oh, well, if you don't have bruises, you weren't abused. That's not the case. It's that the level of abuse you testified to in the photos don't match. And also, if 
we didn't see injuries on depth either injuries to hands and knuckles. And if you're pummeling someone with rings, there's no cuts, there's no swelling. Like it, ju- the evidence and you the testimony don't to match. Donate the $7 million. Oh, donated versus pledged. All right. We're moving on. I will move on as well. Let's move on. And you weren't injured. You had promised to donate the $7 million of your divorce settlement to charity. It was revealed at trial that you haven't done so yet. However, they played a tape where you stayed on the air that you have donated it. Do you think that raised questions as to your yes. credibility with the jury? Yes. I made a, a pledge and that pledge is made over time by its nature. And when you say I donated, you know that everybody thinks that you've donated it, not that you've pledged it. So for the jurors sitting there- Good, ask the question. Do you think they felt like that was you getting caught in a lie? I, I don't know because so much of the, I feel like so much of the trial was meant to cast aspersions on who I am as a human, my credibility, to call me a liar in, in every way you can. And that more. was the trial. It was a credibility contest. Y'all remember when Dr. Hughes was like, I don't want this to become a memory contest. Well, you're an expert. It kind of is a memory test or not contest, memory test. Credibility when you are in a civil case that is what you said versus what somebody else said and is it defamatory. Credibility is the pinnacle thing. Yours and Johnny Depp's. Do you remember that Johnny Depp's credibility was also attacked? His drug use was attacked? Like that's what credibility is, is what the jurors are relying on to determine who is telling the version of events that happened. Credibility. And that was it. This is another one of the examples where if you pull back and you think about it, I shouldn't have to have donated it in in, an effort to be believed. I shouldn't have had to earmark the entirety of that in order to have. You shouldn't have, but when. Wait. What? We're doing this again. Samantha, Savannah Guthrie is, I almost said Samantha, Savannah Guthrie Guthrie is asking fair questions. I think it's fair. She's asking fair questions. Um, Hold on. We're going to have to break this down more. Am I almost done? No. I'm sorry. Amy, I'm sorry. We have a meeting at one. Our meeting, our meeting might have to happen over an email. Our meeting might have to be an email. I'm sorry. Donated it in an in, in effort to be. Okay, hold on. We need to back up a little bit more. Because what I heard her say is, I shouldn't have had to donate it in an effort to be believed. Is Amber Heard telling us the truth about why she made this pledge and donation? Because it's been widely speculated about. The examples where if you pull back and you think about it, I shouldn't have to have donated it in an in, in effort to be believed. I, should- I shouldn't have had to donate it in an effort to be believed. So you chose to say that you donated it because you wanted to be believed. Okay. Shouldn't have had to earmark the entirety of that in order to have. You uh, shouldn't have, but when. I shouldn't have had to earmark the entirety of that to be believed. Wow. So I shouldn't have had to earmark the entirety of that to be believed. Um, so the donation wasn't because she wanted nothing. And on the TV show that came into court, she said, I donated it to these two causes because I wanted nothing. I wanted nothing. And she was questioned on it on cross-examination and she got fiery with Camille Vasquez. I recall Camille Vasquez saying, um, you donated it because you wanted to look like a victim, something along those lines. And she said, I have never, ever called myself a victim. And that is not Ooh, why. I'm not sure about that. I, why does all my tech want to chime in? 
she said, I never, I never wanted anything. And here she's saying that she donated it to be believed that I had to earmark it. So I'd be believed. I can't believe that's what's happening in this interview right now. Why is this not the headline? Hold on. I'm backing up. We're doing this one more time. I'm stunned. I'm stunned that this is happening in this interview right now. Y'all. Huh. And again, the thing I did not catch about this trial until we got to the testimony was that Amber Heard had the full divorce settlement, all $7 million over a year before Johnny Depp sued her. So she had that money for over a year before she was sued. This is another one of the examples where if you pull back and you think about it, I shouldn't have to have donated it in an in, in effort to be believed. I shouldn't have. I shouldn't have had to donate it in an effort to be believed. Well, there's the truth. I've had to earmark the entirety of that in order to have. You uh, shouldn't have, but once you said you did. Right, which is where it was intended to go. Heard says she. That's where it was intended to go. Then why didn't it go there? If you intended to do it, I mean, I intend to be on time every single live stream. I also intend to work out daily. I do intend to not eat Starbucks so much. There are a lot of things I intend to do. Um, I don't always do them. I try. But if you intended it to go there, why didn't it? I think that is so far the biggest thing that's come out of this interview. She still plans to honor that pledge. How do you see your future now? I get to be a mom, like, full time, you know, where I'm not having to juggle calls. I'm not working. With lawyers. One day you may want to tell your daughter about this or have to tell your daughter about everything that you've gone through. What would you want to say? I think no matter what, it will mean something. I did the right thing. I did everything I could to stand up for myself and the truth. Heard and Depp's volatile relationship lasted just four years. Depp. It's interesting that in the interview, she's wearing the same color nail polish, it seems as in that photo that they showed. Heard and Depp's this, volatile relationship lasted just color. four years. Depp confirming his engagement to me on Today in 2014. Wait, I love Depp. Of... Damn it, Emily, get your tech together. I, I wanted to see the ring. I like Depp's ring. Do you feel like that came true? Darn it, where did we go? What did I lose? I... Oh, y'all, I'm sorry. We fucked it all up. And they do plan. No. Be hard to understand. Or it might be really easy to understand. I oh. couldn't. Darn it. I could. Darn it. Darn After it. After everything. Wow. I still have. For me, you know, I wanted to see the first day. Can be, you know, is, uh, I'm going to have to screenshot it. Congratulations. Great Thank you. Are you excited? Yeah, very. She's a wonderful girl. She's, uh, she's sharp as a tack. You know, wonderful, you know, uh, I like the ring. Uh, Southern Belle and um, sweet as can be and, uh, and very good for me. You know? On the first day of the trial, you issued a statement and part of the statement said, I still have love for Johnny. Wait, what? I don't remember that on the first day of the trial. Okay. Yes. Is that still true? Yes. After every. And that was the fastest she answered everything. Is that still true? Yes, I've got questions. Hold on, we're backing up. Issued a statement and part of the statement said, I still have love for Johnny. Yes. Is that still true? Yes. After everything. Absolutely. Absolutely. That's a very definitive statement. I love him. You know, there were times during the trial where I wondered if she had slipped when she was saying, I love him, um, instead of saying loved. And I was like, that's odd to say love still um, after everything. I want to hear the rest of what she has to say. And then we're going to work. Okay. I loved him with all my heart. And I tried the best I could to make a deeply broken relationship work. And I couldn't. I have no bad feelings or ill will towards him at all. I have no bad feelings towards him at all. I'm going to let her. 
Emily, how many times are you going to say, I'm going to let her finish? Look, I'm going to let her finish. And then I have a lot of thoughts about this. And I couldn't. I have no bad feelings or ill will towards him at all. I, I know that might be hard to understand. Or it might be really easy to it's understand. It's hard to understand. If you've just never loved anyone, it should be easy. You, yeah, Jenny, I think this is, this is the response I'm, I'm much more familiar with. Um, this is the response I'm much, much more experience, uh, experienced with. And all of you are saying in the, in the comments, what I'm thinking. She alleged horrific physical and sexual violence against her. And she has no ill will at all. And I, I don't understand that just because I have not met and I don't know everything. I don't know everyone. I am not a psychiatrist. I am not a psychologist. I am someone who worked in courts, who dealt with cases of assault, abuse. I have lived in the world. I have friends. I, I And I think a lot of women have had this experience, men too, um, where we know people who have been abused. The vitriol I have for people who have hurt my friends is stronger than the emotion that Amber Heard is showing. The anger and hate I, oh, we banged. The anger and hate I have for people who have done harm to those I love is strong. So to have no ill will towards the person who you said did these things to you doesn't make sense. I can understand saying leaving is complicated. It is. Leaving abusive relationships is complicated. And I can understand saying the love I had is mixed up in the hate I feel now and the disappointment and the anger. Like I can understand that emotions are complex, that that is hard to leave. And it's hard to understand how you could love someone who could then do this to you. And it makes you question your own sanity in that kind of abusive dynamic. That's not what she said. She didn't say, I'm still confused as to how somebody I love so much could have hurt me so much and the anger I have and how... No ill will. She said no ill will. None. And that's confusing to me. It's just very confusing to me because I don't understand how no ill will is happening um, after what you alleged in court. I just don't understand. But that's what she said in the interview. She has no ill will. And you guys can decide if you think she's telling the truth in this part. I think she is being truthful here when she says that she still loves him. I think this is true. It just doesn't match her testimony. I have no bad feelings or ill will towards him at all. I, I know that might be hard to understand. Or it might be really easy to understand. If you've just ever loved anyone, it should be easy. Depp's attorneys have. I have stronger anger towards people who made fun of me in junior high than Amber Heard seems to have against the person who abused her. No, the person who she says abused her. So many of you in the chat are survivors. I'm sorry. I paused because I'm looking at all of you. Um, it's for all of you who are survivors. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to be angry. It's okay to be angry at them. Don't be angry at yourself and forgive yourself because you did not cause this to happen to you. You did not fail to protect you. It's okay to be angry at them. And it's okay that it takes years and years and years and sometimes a lifetime to forgive and to recover and to heal. It's just confusing testimony. It's just confusing testimony. Um, and you don't have to forgive the person who did that to you, you do have to forgive yourself because it's not your fault. I just, it's very confusing. All right. We're going to see the end of what she says, and then we're going to go through super chats and questions. 
I feel, well, I'll tell you how I feel. Let's let, let's let Savannah finish. Have said they do not see the verdict in this case as a setback to victims of domestic violence coming forward. Heard's legal team has said they do plan to appeal this summer. Quick note, we will have more of our conversation with Amber Heard during a special edition of Dateline, including evidence she says should have been included in the trial that would have bolstered her case. She told us in this segment that she wasn't a lawyer. So how is she going to tell us what should have been included in her case? You can stream part of it, a sneak preview tomorrow on Peacock. Ahead of that Dateline special, a full hour airing Friday night, 8, 7 central here on NBC. So So this is airing Friday night, 8, 7 central on Dateline. And this has... um, this has sorry i heard that i got a little blurry we don't mean to be blurry it is my aura of anger um nbc put out a two-minute clip on monday an eight-minute clip on tuesday an eight-minute clip on wednesday a preview on thursday on peacock only and then the interview on friday this has become a five-day news breakdown but i think we're going to get more of this Here's what I think. I think that Amber Heard was disappointed in how her lawyers handled this. I think that she wanted to take matters into her own hands the same way in her rebuttal testimony. She was like almost arguing to the jury as to why they should believe her. I think she wanted to take this into her own hands and felt that she needed to have the last word, that the jury wasn't going to have the last word, that she was going to have the last word. And that is interesting to me it's interesting to me that nbc was like yeah we'll let you have the last word um because she was found liable for defamation for saying that johnny depp abused her and now she's reasserting those allegations on nbc i think we can see an injunction they might just let her talk i i don't know how johnny depp's legal team will respond i will be very interested to see I also want to know how much she's paid for this and if it's going to legal fees or not. Um, I think Amber Heard got paid. I I do. I I can't imagine she would sit down without it. So, Amy, I think she got paid. Um, They said it's an NBC exclusive. I don't know how much. I would love to know those kinds of things, but I don't know the behind baseball on TV. Well, all right. I am going to get to Super Chats and Questions. To all of you in the chat who this is triggering for, thank you for maintaining this chat as a safe place for survivors to share their experience. All of that matters. And that's why the Lawnards do things the way that we do. I am surprised that she is continuing to um, go into the allegations here. I would have liked to have seen, I mean, I don't know what else she could have talked about. Could she have just talked about this is how this felt going through this? This is um, this is how hard this was for me, and this is how I'm going to get my life back after this. Could we have seen that? Did we? No. Um, and thank you. We're at 640 on the road to 650, so you just do the YouTube things. Let's see where we're at. I we just binged. We should celebrate that. We binged. We're gonna go to questions. Let's let's bing first. Oh, it binged. Move your head. Ah! To the 64,000 of you watching live, thank you for being here. I I still don't think this interview was a good idea. I don't think it was a good idea. And we did. We just hit 640. So thank you, all of you, for keeping the subscriber counter moving. I'm going to click this off, and then some of you are going to subscribe, and then it's going to start rolling again. So thank you. It takes a bit. As I say that, it... <laughs> As I say it, we see it start going. So thank you for all of you um, that are subscribing and supporting me and the channel through that. I just, I think this interview was a bad idea. I think that it could end up with her or with Depp's team having more strong grounds for a permanent injunction. I think that she doesn't care and that she wants a damn y'all and that she wants to have the last word no matter what. And I I really think that that's what we're seeing is this is her wanting to have her last word. Whether or not the media should be giving her a platform to do that, I I don't know. I think people are curious. I think it's newsworthy. And I don't 
quite know how I feel about it. I haven't really parsed that yet for myself because it's curious to me. Um, and maybe the parsing is that, well, she won one count. She lost these others. But if you believe the verdict, then she's made some substantial lies that ruined someone's life for six years. And now she's having a platform to try to what rehabilitate her image or have the last word. She said in her testimony that she wanted this to be done. Um, but I really think she wants to have the last word and not be done. I think having the last word is more important. And I think she feels that she's a little bit judgment proof. She's like, fuck it. I don't have the money. Come at me, bro. She's real. Not going to like, she's really not going to like if they get an injunction. And I think they should, I think they should seek that. I don't know if they will choose to, that's a strategic call between a lot of lawyers, but I think they could choose to. And she's not going to like how that works after a verdict at all. Not going to like it at all. She's going to be like, they're silencing me. Yes. They're silencing your right to make defamatory, continued defamatory statements. Yes, they are. They, yes, they are. They're allowed to do that. If you haven't seen me read the Cardi B Tasha K injunction, and you would like to see me try to make that make sense on the YouTubes, that's on the channel. And uh, it is quite an injunction. People went to law school for that. It's it's an interesting read. But the defa the defamation in that case is different than the defamation in this case. All right, I'm going to try to get to as many questions as I can. And um, I'm sorry to my team for not being at our team meeting. <laughs> Dylan said, to your point about being mad, what sticks with me this far out of the trial is Amber's continued refusal to cop to any negative emotions or thoughts, never angry, only sad and hurt, which is interesting, too. Like you're allowed to be angry. People are allowed to be angry. Angry is not bad. Angry is a feeling. Angry feelings are allowed to happen. But it's odd that she's like, I have no ill will. Um, if, if the things that she testified to happened to most people, there would be more than hard feelings. There would be more than ill will. Even if there there had been love there before. It is interesting. Ryan, 20XX, if Amber continues saying the same thing she alleged before, could she be sued again? Or couldn't she be sued again? Yes, she could be sued again. These are republications to a new audience after she knows that they're defamatory because the jury said they're defamatory. I mean, the jury said you knew they were defamatory when you made them because you knew they weren't true. But yeah, they could. I think the injunction might be the better route at this point because it's it's already been litigated. And I think the injunction gets you to, if she continues to make it, then you get violating court orders and you can pursue it that way instead of having to relitigate it in front of another jury. But she could, but she could. So I feel like Johnny Depp wouldn't have this grace if he were in Amber Heard's shoes. They would continue to railroad him because if they did this interview with him, people would probably burn the building down. KK, I think... I still think after Johnny Depp won this case resoundingly, the media has still not come around to, is it time to believe Johnny Depp? I've seen the, is it time to believe Amber Heard headlines? I've seen the case called an orgy of misogyny and other things, but I have not seen the main headlines turn yet. I ha I just haven't. Um, question, do you think if the genders were reversed, they'd still be offering a primetime interview? No, I don't. No, I don't. And that's just my own gut response. Again, I don't have any super secret special insight into the media. I'm a girl with a microphone on the YouTubes with a law degree and work experience. I mean, I don't, I never worked in media. I don't, but I just, I think they would get skewered for it. So Christy says, is it possible the ACLU, Elon, or someone else is paying her bills? Always possible. Do you know about Amber giving Johnny's dog to her dad who was convicted of Anna? I don't know anything about that. Um, I don't know why she would have had the dog unless she got the dog in the divorce. I don't know anything about that. But um, the legal fees, there has been lots of discussion about whether or not they're being paid by insurance policies. That can be the case. And people can pay legal fees. I'm sure that's happening in other cases that I'm covering as well. But if she's like, I don't have any assets, good luck. Mm. Truth be told said, question, once you are caught in what the jury believes is a lie, can't they discount her entire testimony? Yes. I went over the, um, I went over those jury instructions a couple times, but the, the credibility of witnesses instruction breaks that down to avoid paying 6% on the judgment. Does Johnny have to pay her 2 million? And what if she doesn't pay him? Um, so I need to look at exactly how the two, the 6% stacks. I think it's annual, not monthly. I think it's yearly. 
Um, it depends on if they negotiate settlement. When final settlement's entered on June 24th, we'll have a better idea. But if if they do not resolve the settlement, they can go to the court and say, hey, can we offset? But they don't have a right to that. The judgment can be entered two million for Amber Heard, you know, 10.3 million for Johnny Depp. And then they can file a motion to offset saying Johnny Depp doesn't need to pay Amber Heard. We're reducing Amber Heard's award to this. But those motions all have to be filed in court. And we haven't seen that yet. And we might leading up to the 24th. Um, but otherwise, yes, Johnny would have to pay her. And what if she can't pay him? Then he is going to spend a lot of time and money trying to run that down. So I think they'll probably try to settle it for offset. I don't know if she'll want to. She might be like, no, pay me the two million. I'm not paying it back. Kristen Scott said, as a survivor of DV, I do not have love for him. It took me a long time to move forward, but I forgave him for myself and my daughter's sake. It took years and a lot of prayer. It's still hard. Of course, it's still hard, Kristen. I'm sorry that was your experience. And just trying to be kind to yourself. Question, how long does JD's team have to respond to her republication or ask for an injunction? Um, defamation in Virginia, I believe, is two years. It could be a year. I would have to look again. A year to two years to relitigate from the time the statements are made. Could they ask for an injunction whenever they want? Yes, they could. Um, they could. They could wait and see what else she says. I'm, they're definitely going to wait until Friday's interview is out. Care Bear 737 said, found out my massage therapist was a fellow law nerd. We listened today while she massaged me. Yay. Thanks, Emily and Kay. It's a small Emily D. Baker world. I love that so much. Massage is such a necessary part of life. Um, Chaz, can you cover the January 6th hearings so we can get a third party explaining what is going on and what it could all mean legally? I am not that third party. Um, I am sure there are others covering it. I do not have the fortitude or the background in current politics because it just, because I hate it and I hate talking about it. So I cover pop culture on my channel. I don't cover politics um, and I don't like to cover politics. Will I be watching? Yes. Will I be breaking it down? No, it's just not my content. And I pretty much do stay in my lane on that. Um, and if I go out of my lane, I always explain why, but I don't think legally I can help with that. There are others that cover politics so much more. Um, I just don't. Uh, Lisa said, why is no one talked about the fact that her face always looks swollen on that side? Just look at this interview. It looks identical to the photo on the courthouse steps. I don't know. Tom said she was telling the truth about loving him. I think so. She sent the op-ed. Yeah. She sent the op-ed because he rejected her that is what she's angry about because he wouldn't stay and put up with the drama she said this in her audio i don't know which audio that is but um i do believe that she still loves him johnny depp's gross text to friends make more sense for a victim than amber and her proposed goodwill my texts about my abuser are not kind um and nor should nor do they have to be you need somewhere to vent um but thank you for sharing and these I had forgotten a lot of those texts were after um, the TRO. Brianna said, I know she won't ever go public about it, but do you have any guesses about what Judge A has to be thinking about this fiasco? Judge A is probably wishing everyone would shut the fuck up about this. <laughs> that would be my guess. Um, I think Judge A ran a really great court in all of this. Robin said, burning trial question. Why did Rottenborn do Amber's rebuttal and not Elaine? I thought it was one witness, one attorney. It is, but rebuttal is a separate kind of phase of the proceeding, so they could switch it up. I think Rottenborn did a better job. I think she and Elaine did not have great chemistry. I don't think... When it glitched, it changed my mic settings. I'm sorry, y'all. When it glitched, it changed my mic settings. Apologies. Um, we're, gl we're glitching. Ah! 
Take that, Bainbridge scholars. Okay. So why did Rottenborn do Amber's rebuttal, not Elaine? I thought it was one witness, one attorney. It is during the course of that testimony. So when when Amber Heard was called up to testify, they couldn't switch to Rottenborn in the middle of her testimony. But when she's called again, it's as if she's kind of a fresh witness, even though she's being recalled, so they could switch attorneys because of that. And when you switch attorneys because of that, he was allowed to question her. I think Rottenborn did a better job questioning Amber Heard than Elaine did. And I don't know what was going on behind the scenes with Elaine and Amber Heard. My guess from watching them kind of struggle with each other during testimony and especially during redirect is that that was not working well for the two of them. Just for a little levity, I was at a workshop about hostile work environment and the speaker talked about having a boss who was grumpy and I had to bite my tongue not to laugh out loud. <laughs> grumpy has taken on a whole new meaning for all of us. Vintage Willow said, I wonder if his toes were scissors too. That would explain how he broke the bed. I mean, it seems that blades are what broke the bed. Turn my sister in law onto your channel. She's watching now. Hi, Stacy. Hi, Stacy. Red Rover, the effing game cat's sister in law. My sister in law is probably at work. If in joke, but I know my friend Chris is probably watching, and I hope you are recovering from the vid, my friend. You escaped it for forever, and I hope you are feeling well. I will text you after I stream. Um, if injunction to shut your yap is filed, does that play into her silenced BS? Oh, yes. Yes. Yes, it will. See, they are continuing to try to silence you. No. Not lying is not being silenced. Adam Waldman is hinting something is coming. I'm sure it is. It should be a motion for an injunction. I would wait till after Friday, though. I wouldn't try to stop this now. Look, don't stop me now. She's not helping. It, it, did this interview help any of you? Did this interview make any of you go, oh, I'm more empathetic towards Amber Heard? If she had talked about the human experience of this trial, about all of it, um, maybe, but she's not. She's continuing to say it's everyone's fault but mine. I don't find it to be very sympathetic. It doesn't change my mind about her at all. So it just doesn't. Can Depp's team ask for an injunction? Yes, they can. Will they? We'll see. Um, Don said, welcome to Middle Tennessee. You should try LA, i.e. lower Alabama. We have not been to Alabama yet. It's somewhere we want to go. We want to explore more. I've been working a lot since we've moved. Um, Courtney, oh my God, where have you been? Emily, we've missed you. Please don't leave us like that. My ADHD can't handle it. I mean, I only missed Tuesday. We were late by a day, but I realize that not streaming every day, we have all missed being together every day. Um, Lala or OP said, I'm at work, paralegal here in Dallas. I know, are you watching this going, what is happening? All cats, no gluten. I'm getting married this Saturday. Congratulations. Jen Gerard, good to see you. Good morning, gorgeous. Happy to be here with the Lawnards and Pawnards. Good morning, Jen Gerard. Good to see you. I'm going to try to get to as many super chats as I can, and then I'm going to have to bounce because at least at least a little bit of a team meeting needs to happen. I started watching the trial on your channel. Everything you say is exactly what I think. The drama, I just can't. Thank you for everything. You're welcome. You're welcome. You're welcome. Are you coming to Pride in Nashville? Jen, I'm not sure when Pride in Nashville is. I need to look. Um, I am always down to go to Pride. I need to look at when it is because I have been working too much. I need to get out. I've been working a lot. I got out yesterday. It was lovely. Um, and I want to take the kids to go see Lightyear. Maybe just the youngest. The oldest is like, I don't care. Maybe just the youngest. Um, just wait until the jury members speak. I imagine that the jury members are like, I don't, I, if I was a member of the jury, I'd, I'd be getting pissed at this point. Um, I think they should all negotiate that so they can get paid to speak. Everett said, I'm about 50 minutes behind, but wanted to comment on the global humiliation text. Johnny sent that to his sister. Amber Heard didn't see the text till he disclosed it in his phone records. Also fair. Um, and also fair to say, he might be saying she's going to, um, she's going to be humiliated if she keeps trying to do this. What do you think of Rottenborn choosing not to speak? I think it's probably smart. I think Rottenborn doesn't have anything to say. And he's like, we've litigated this. There's nothing left to say. And I don't think Depp's lawyers would have spoken if Elaine hadn't spoken. Depp's lawyers were clearly responding to Elaine. But this interview by Amber Heard is not going to be covered by litigation privilege. Where Elaine's has a... a Elaine's would have more of a question mark about whether or not she's covered. Even then, I think it's a big question mark. But 
with Amber Heard, this is not covered. These are republications of same statements. And it's just, I don't like it. Um, she called herself a victim in this interview, but on the stand, she said she never called herself a victim. She has contradicted some of her testimony. That is for sure. My Apple watch is giving me the business. I need to call. I need to call Apple. Uh, do you think Amber is purposely trying to be legally silent so that she can further the victim playing? I don't know. I feel like her interview today was her trying to set the stage for that great coverage. I mean, maybe she keeps saying she keeps trying to make this a bigger societal narrative. And I wonder if she's trying to make this a bigger societal narrative to try to rally people to her side. There are people on the side of not silencing victims. There are that, that is, that is absolutely something that needs to happen. The me too movement is what started. Well, it had started long before it kind of gained um, traction in the larger public awareness that powerful individuals, particularly men can silence victims and accusers with money with threats of litigation this case isn't that this case is a essentially a defamation case because of a domestic dispute this isn't a harvey weinstein case where you're seeing um structures of power protecting people in power which is still a conversation that needs to have it's just not the conversation that amber heard is having through this case and i don't think she sees it that way she sees johnny depp as a man in power and she is trying to take that power structure down i don't see this case that way um johnny depp was not protected by hollywood i think he was like yeeted immediately cj said a from a fellow t tennessee girl appreciate everything you do thank you you are welcome did she say Christian Soriano? No, Christian Carino Carano was the agent that testified. If Elaine is with a firm in Virginia, why was she also with Amber during the UK trial? I saw her standing with Amber when she made her statement to reporters during the UK trial because she knew that this was coming. So she was already on the case there and knowing what's happening in the UK is very important to the case that played out here. So that's why she was with her. Um, she was not trying the case there. She was not like one of the lawyers on that case, but she was part of Amber Heard's team. Every time you say, let us, I think of a scene from Hannah Montana when Billy Ray is using food and sentences to say, let us sit and talk. <laughs> Could they be sealing them for the appeal? I think that's what they're trying to do, radioactive Girl Scout. I think they're trying to seal those records for appeal. What if any deadline is there for appeal? The notice of appeal generally has to be filed 30 days after the final judgment. The final judgment doesn't go in until June 24th, unless it gets bumped. Good morning. I've missed this live since the case is over. I was hoping we would move on. There's other things happening in the law. It's on their YouTube channel called Watch Today. I will go, oh, I will go look. I didn't see the cut down one on YouTube, which is why I went to the um, website. How exactly do appeals work just within the court without the claimants? Yes, it's just based, appeals are based on the record. So it's based on the record, it's based on the transcripts and it's based on the law. Was there an error made at law? Not facts at law. So facts fund contribution from the heart. Thank you, breathing in spirit. I appreciate that. So it evaluates the law. Is Umbridge giving her the okay to do this? I have no idea. And I don't know if she would listen, but I would normally say, you know, and I, I think others have probably said, if you have a lawyer, if you have a client kind of going off the rails like this, you would be like, don't throw the jury under the bus. But a lot of the talking points are um, the same that Elaine said. So I don't think her team's telling her not to do the things, which is odd, which is odd. Bonnie Scotland said, dear God, at this point, she is just, uh, she just really hard to look at and listen to. Does she honestly think she's helping herself? I don't know. I don't know if she thinks she's helping or just wants the last word. Those are not chunky rings on Johnny Depp's fingers. Those are metal scars from the scissor removal surgery. RJ, thank you. I was, I was deeply confused. That's exactly what it is. Cause the scissor hands weren't like Wolverine. They didn't like come in and out. So there we go. They're the metal scars from his scissor removal. Thank you. I'm clear on it now. Camille is watching this interview saying, hold, hold now injunction. <laughs> kind of like during Elaine's closing. I'm sure the lawyers are like, you've got to be fucking kidding me. Savannah is a lawyer. Georgetown received trial advocacy award for her work with DV victims. I, I'm going to have to look more at Savannah Guthrie's background. I think Savannah is doing a good job balancing 
being a friendly interviewer with asking tough questions. I think that's a hard balance. I don't know how I would do that. Who on earth advised her to do this interview? Doesn't she have a PR team? I don't know if there's any advising her at this point. Vintage Willow, Runkle talked to Amber fans that, Amber fans there, so court, that changed their minds when they heard her testify. Her testimony, I think, again, she lost this case for herself. Um, and it's tough. Was the jury bust in daily with blackout curtain windows to shield them from the crowds? No. And I think that will come up with regard to um, what was going on outside the courtroom in appeal. I think it will. I think that's a valid question to ask. Like how much did what was going on outside the courtroom potentially impact the jury? But I think that Amber Heard's team undermined that argument when they brought in the social media expert because the appeals court's going to say, well, they knew the weight of public opinion was on Johnny Depp's side because you brought in this hashtag expert that told them that. So I think they would have had room for argument there. And I think they undercut it with that witness. Um, BB McD said, but there's the thing. She keeps referring to him as his characters because she thinks she's the only one who sees the real him and we're sucked in. That's a very good point from Adelaide, Australia. That is a good point that she's saying you all, you don't love Johnny Depp. You love Captain Jack Sparrow. Um, I, I honestly just want to see what the truth is. Um, also, I have friends and family who didn't watch the trial. I'm in Mexico and a translator was doing a live transmission with Spanish translation. That's very cool. Um, I wonder if Samantha, uh, Savannah Guthrie, see, if you say Samantha, I'm going to start getting confused. Spans McNair. Savannah Guthrie or any other Today Show staff had to follow rules on how to interact with her because of her PTSD like she testified to. I don't know. I don't know. Are you watching the Danielle uh, Redlick trial? No, I'm trying to catch up on all the cases that I've been covering, so I have not been watching it. Domino V says, it seems to me that she's doing this to stay in the spotlight from what I understand about cluster B characteristics. Any attention is better than none. I think I need to go back and rewatch all of Dr. Curry's testimony. Um, Metalix, Mellatrix, sorry, Mellatrix Lestrange. That makes more sense in my brain once I read the whole thing. I find it rich that Amber Heard is trying to be such a proponent of free speech while also wanting to limit free speech on social media. Yeah, the irony is not lost on me. That's how free speech works, unless you're being mean to me because the treatment of me is not fair. Free speech doesn't mean fair. Social media doesn't mean fair. Social media gets things wrong all the time. It's not fair. It's social media. It can be a Thunderdome. Um, so um, I've been only psychologically abused and can't hear my ex's name and heavenly it's it is damaging damaging abuse and we heard johnny depp testify about how hard the psychological abuse was um for him and psychological abuse is abuse but that's not what if if amber heard had testified about that only then johnny depp's team wouldn't have been putting up pictures saying but what about here? But what about here? But what about on the James Corden show? The only reason they brought up pictures saying that the pictures contradict the evidence is because she put out the evidence to be contradicted, you know? <sighs> Josie said, I wasn't even abused by my ex, but I won't, I wouldn't say I love them. Not since we broke up. I can't even. Um, Lilla said my abuser's name is Forrest and 20 years later, I still want to set a forest fire. It's fair. It's fair. Anger is fair. Anger is anger and shame and regret. There's, there's so much there. It's, it's just very, very striking to see her say, I have no ill will towards him. Okay. KK said she wrote a statement on Instagram right before the trial. She's obsessed again, why she comes as the controller as why she comes as the controller and the abusive ones say that. I mean, it, it's a hard thing to watch. Um, Trisha P., I'm sorry this happened to you. SA, two men and DV. By mom, I hate them still. I wish I knew how to forgive myself. Uh, forgive for myself. You can forgive yourself um, and you can move on. You can move on. You can move on. Um, but I understand how, how exhausting anger can be too. Caddy said many survivors have love for their abusers for a long time after the relationship. Psychological abuse is real. I think people question her saying that because we don't believe her. Johnny loved his mom till her dying day and we believe him. And I, I think saying that there's Johnny said he loved his mom and he moved past it and forgave her, but the abuse was hard. It's an excellent and fair point. Caddy. 
Um, it's just confusing to me that she's like, you know, I love him without saying, and, and I'm still angry about what he did because I think there's room to say, I have love for this person. I'm angry about the abuse that I suffered. I'm angry about what happened. I'm angry about how all this went down. I'm sad about how all this went down. I'm, I'm conflicted, but that that's not what she said. I mean, maybe she'll flush it out more in the full interview and all I, there's no all right. Everyone responds to things differently. Everyone has their own unique response. It just sits odd for me, um, based on my experiences. But yes, Johnny did say he loved his mom till her dying day. And yes, we absolutely believed him. So it is, it is fair. It's just, it's, it's an, uh, the way she answered it was just odd for me. So that's very fair. Um, some people are very forgiving. We heard audio recordings that she is not, um, that she is much more vindictive over little things. That's also a fair point. Um, also a fair point. Question, is it a symptom of something to try to win him back? I have no idea. I Maybe she thinks he will drop the money. I, I don't. I think she's telling the truth. I do when she says that she's still um, uh, love, love him. I, I, I think that that was the truth. I do. So I, I don't, it's, it's confusing to me, but again, people respond to things differently. Andrew said, thank you for making this a kind place um, to be. I saw another law tuber make jokes about members of the LGBT community and as an, al- and as an ally, it was concerning. Um, I, I don't, well, again, I, on my channel, I can only speak for myself and my community and that's not what we do here. So that is what it is. I mean, every Every creator, um, every creator across the platform has their own way of engaging with their community and our community is welcoming if you're welcoming, like everyone is welcome if you're welcoming. That's where our don't be a dick policy comes in. Once people cross the line of not being welcoming, then they are no longer welcome. That is our, that is when we summarize all of our rules, that's where we get to. But, um, I, again, this is why there is choice. Everyone engages different ways on the internet. Hey, Emily Nashville Gow here. Love, love, love. Um, do you think her comments in the NBC interview can affect her appeal? No. Christian, I think I addressed this. If I didn't address it well, I can address it again. The reason no is because that's just going to be based on the transcript. I think it can affect if they ask for uh, an injunction, but it's just on the on the transcript for the appeal. Do you think an appeal will be denied? No idea. I think Judge A did everything right. I don't know what the grounds for appeal are. We missed you so much. Thanks for doing live streams earlier. Um, I think I might need to add another daytime stream. I'll, I've been thinking about that. But I think that we didn't see every single legal ruling that was made in this case. Not all of them have been memorialized in writing. So is there the possibility that there's something? I want to see the motion and then we'll evaluate it when we see what the grounds are. I can't evaluate it in a vacuum because we don't know. We don't know what they have to say. There could be something we never saw. Um couldn't help but thinking that there's big money behind Amber's desperate, ill thought out reality averse PR push. What are your thoughts? I have, I don't know. Um, it's an odd, it's a, it's an odd PR strategy to not take a, to not just take a minute after a trial loss like this and reflect and take some time and figure it out. It's, it's, it's just odd to me. Hi from Norway. Um, hello, Norway. It's Thor. Um, wonderful to see and hear you tonight. Thank you. Been missing you. Can't you, can you say hi to my friend Inga? Inga, hello from it's Thor. Thor would like to say hello. <laughs> Did Johnny Depp at one point want a post up from Amber? Yes. It seemed to be what kicked off all the fighting in Australia, glitching and binging. That's what we did. We're still, it's still rolling by the way, y'all we're still, ah, my screen share disappeared. We are still rolling. Um, oh, wait here. It's still going. It's still going. Y'all, y'all are doing the thing. Please revisit the Depp UK case and do an episode on the differences. It would be even better if you could go through it with Black Belt Barrister, who has great insight in the UK case. Black Belt Barrister and I have, uh, I think are connected in email. My emails have been flooded and I haven't gotten back to everyone, but I have started watching his content on this. And as a UK barrister, it's very interesting, but yes, I think it would be. Very helpful to revisit that case, and I think that would be a helpful way to do it. Will Lane go on a press tour? Um, 
damage the appeal or even put her at risk of being sued. I don't see it for Elaine. I see it more for her putting herself at risk and know the appeals just on the record. So Cindy, I can't stand my ex fiance and I loved him deeply, but the emotional and mental abuse, I will never forgive or forget. And that's, and that's a fair thing. As long as you forgive yourself, there's a complete difference between saying, I still care for him and there are no hard feelings towards him at all. And I think that's a fair point too. Um, it's, I think it's complex emotion is real. It's one of the things that makes relational violence so difficult. And again, I am not an expert. Um, I am a girl with experience and that is it. And I am not by any way trying to be an expert, but when I'm giving commentary on what I'm seeing playing out, that hits weird for me. That's it. It hits weird for me. So, um, Enigma says she has no ill will at all because he did not do those incredibly violent, horrific acts of abuse to her. I know the UK case was different, but can you discuss how? And I think that's going to need to be an entire other stream to talk about how, because it's just, um, it's just, it's, it's, there's a lot to go through, but the judge being one thing, the standards of evidence being another thing, the parties being different, the paper had to prove that they had reason to believe Amber Heard. And that they had enough, essentially enough reason to believe Amber Heard that what they printed was not defamatory, that they had taken the lengths to see if she was telling the truth. But they weren't allowed to attack her credibility more because, again, the Sun UK wouldn't have done that. It's like this is all the evidence we took in and we looked at all of this and we thought, yeah, we can fairly call Johnny Depp this thing. And the court, Amber Heard's credibility was not at issue in the way that it is here. And the count, the court discounted some things that did call her credibility into issue and discounted the police officers quite heavily. Question, attorney here, could she sue the lawyer who reviewed the op-ed for malpractice? I think think she does that. She does need the money. I don't, it just depends on what the lawyer said. I mean, the lawyer, I'm sure, well, I can't imagine a lawyer saying, this is guaranteed that you're not going to get sued for defamation. I can imagine a lawyer saying, this, you know, this is, if if this is true, then this is a mild retelling of the truth. And therefore you can move forward. The jury found that it wasn't true. Could she try? I mean, you know, everyone can sue everyone for anything. I don't know if that's a good look if she tries to sue that attorney. And also I don't know the statute of limitations. That was 2018. I think it's two years or three years on malpractice. She might be outside of the statute of limitations at this point. So how unbeneficial is this for her? Would this harm her appeal? No, doesn't harm her appeal. Could make it easier to get an injunction. If Johnny gets an injunction and Amber defies it, what are the consequences? You go back to court and then the court has consequences. And that can be contempt of court consequences. Contempt of court can start getting into fines and jail time. Ren, I have no ill will for him. I still love him. But he is a boring um, geriatric, has been of the most pathetic roles who will end up fat and alone. I would love to see the full uncut interview, including everything on the cutting room floor. Trisha P, wouldn't we all? I don't think that's ever going to happen. I wish uh, Savannah Guthrie would call her on her lies more. She keeps avoiding the answer. No, I asked why the photos the next day showed no bruise. TMZ was right outside the door, et cetera. I, we haven't seen the whole thing yet, so we're not there yet. Jay Fox said, did I miss the comment about the randos? And yes, please do a video on the British case. No, that was in one of the other two minute clips. I just pulled up the two bigger clips because even then we're still at almost three hours of streaming and I had a meeting at one that I was supposed to be at and then missed. Sorry. Do you think jury members watch all the follow-up press and interviews? I wouldn't want to, or do you think they're just overhearing about it? I think I would be done and I think I'd be angry, but I imagine your friends and coworkers would be telling you it's like the internet um, or high school or junior high when somebody's like, girl, did you hear what they're saying about you? Girl, this person said this, this person said that. I think if you were their friends or family, you would be like, did you hear what they're saying about the jury? I think it's, to you'd want to have a conversation. If I knew somebody on the jury, I'd want to have that conversation. Wouldn't you? I think you would be. Question, will the appeal be televised? No, the appeal will not be televised, but it'll all be in filings and the filings will be fleshed out. So that, that. I believe she said that she has no ill will and still loves him because she feels that it makes her look like a wonderful, forgiving woman. Cat, I don't, it's an odd thing. You know, if somebody, I don't know. I'm not, I don't get offended by people's rage. I understand that it can be a hard line and maybe she is trying to not look vindictive, but I think 
Ang- if that happens, anger is okay. That's not vindictive to be angry at people who hurt you. <sighs> when she goes for appeal, can she get her mountain of evidence in? No, the evidence that comes in in court is what comes in and then the rulings of the judge. And we'll see. I mean, we just have to wait. I can't really give much more on the appeal until the until it's filed. Just said, I'm a bit behind. Love you and the mods. Thank you. The snarl Amber Heard is doing is, um, in my opinion, subconscious because she's ticked off that she has to keep saying her lies and not being believed. I mean, she didn't seem to be getting much, much back from Savannah Guthrie. When is questioning a victim's story okay? If a public figure has a background of lying, manipulating, and being vengeful, is questioning a story wrong? Um, should I feel shame for seeing inaccuracies or not believing someone? I can never tell somebody when to feel shame. I think it's okay to believe people and say, but there's some things that don't line up. There will be natural inconsistencies to things um, sometimes, but generally they tend to be smaller. But I think it's okay on a case-by-case basis to say, I come in wanting to believe or believing. And then if there are a lot of red flags, then I will ask questions. And this is something as a society we have not dealt with well having these conversations because people don't want to be accused of victim shaming or victim blaming or um, not believing all, you know, children, women, men, what have you. But our court system is not set up that way. Our court system is set up to innocent until proven guilty. And it's a hard match between what our court system does and what the court of public opinion does and where those two things are. Um, I think it's, it's fair to ask questions. I want to see both sides and it's fair to say, I hear what you're saying and I believe your experience. But if that is expanding to somebody being prosecuted or what have you, then it's, I want to see both sides of a thing and listening and being open to listen to both sides. Cause sometimes what we see on social media is people don't want to hear both sides. It's like, Oh, somebody said this and that's it. And I understand that knee jerk reaction. And it depends on if there's action. It's okay for you. If you see something, um, who got canceled, like, like Shane Dawson, um, for a YouTube, a YouTube reference to look at the things that were, were pulled out and said and say, okay, did this person say these things? What is the context of this person saying these things? And is that okay for me? Is that a creator I want to spend time and money with? Yes or no. I think that's a fair internal discussion, but when do things then go towards, I don't want to look at a company that would work with that person. When does it go further and what evidence is needed for it to go further? Cause I think there's a difference between, Hey, I'm not, I don't like the way this person discusses things. I don't like the jokes that they make. I don't, I don't like the way they engage. I don't like their content, whatever it is. I'm not engaging. But when is the line between then saying to others, you shouldn't engage And if you do engage, you're now in this box of being terrible and then companies shouldn't engage. Like when does it ripple from a personal decision to more? I think these are all conversations that need to be had. I don't know how to have them. I don't know where to have them. I don't know where it's okay to have them um, because they're difficult conversations. And I don't think it's really well been flushed out. And I think it's a hard thing to have conversation around because it can so easily be taken out of context that, Oh, well, you're not believing people. People should be believed. Um, Also, I find that when people are telling the truth, it's not hard to believe them. When you're finding yourself really struggling to believe someone, it's okay to say, well, what other information is there here? And I think it's okay to say, for me, I'm out, but where should it go further? I don't know. I don't know where those conversations end. I just, I don't, I truly don't know. Um, And I, I think it's important to keep evaluating those things, but it is also really hard. The first people who came out and said they had questions about Jesse Smollett's case were also called horrible things. And it's like, well, there is some questions here. And I think it's fair to say when things are odd, um, like a polar vortex and, you know, a police investigation to say, Hey, This should never happen. What he described should never happen. It's horrific. But then when there's questions to be like, my mind is open to the fact that there's now an ongoing investigation and I want to see what the ongoing investigation turns up. And that's something that you need to keep, I don't know, an open mind to it's, I, I believe this person and I'm open to more information. Maybe that's the solution. I don't know. Emily, are you talking as you're thinking out loud? Yes. 
but maybe that's the solution is I believe this and I'm open to other information. And that's where the critical thinking comes in. I believe this, but I'm still open to other information. Is that a fair answer? I think that's a fair answer. So, and that's, and that's where that is. And it's okay. And it's, it's a personal, it's also a personal choice. So she chose to destroy him. She could no longer control him. The hoax was real. She did not file. He would have been arrested and kept in town. Um, I think he could have been arrested and they would have investigated. And then I think it, it might have come to conversation then. Uh, Katrina said testifying this Monday for my friend who experienced felony DV. She refuses to show up to protect him. Thank you for sharing the imperfect victim story. It is, it is very hard. And there, I mean, I am not the, the perfect person to talk about DV. I have not, I do not know clearly everything. I don't know if I can, this has not been the focus of the breadth of my career, but that is not uncommon. And it doesn't mean the thing didn't happen. The intricacies of, of IPV are difficult and the financial realities of breaking up families are very hard in the U S and it can be one of the things that makes it very, very hard for people to leave, especially if the abuser is the sole breadwinner. It's like, and then what, and then what this person goes to jail and then what, and then how, and then how, um, and then how do I survive? And that's a very, very real and difficult thing. There is so much, um, there and it's hard. So Katrina, um, good luck. Good luck to you. You saw what you saw. Tell the truth. State of California provides sheriff service for TROs. They do. TROs are not hard. And then Amber heard out a fleet of lawyers too. Question. What role do proffers play in appeals? Friendly reminder, check Patreon DMs when you can. I will Kimmy. I, oh, I'm supposed to be off well long ago, but the proffers that we saw on the record were, um, were them reading into the record. This is what would have happened. And you can go back. Needlehoft is reading through them kind of quickly, but this is what would have happened so that the appeals court has a record of the court ruled that this couldn't come in. And I'm, this is a hypothetical example because I don't remember any of these verbatim. Um, so the court ruled that this testimony was hearsay from this witness. And if this witness had been allowed to testify, they would testify with A, B, C, D, E. So that's what the proffer is so that the appeals court doesn't look at it and go, well, we don't know what they would have said. So we, doesn't, we don't know if it would have mattered. So this is the way of saying this is what happened. This was what would have happened. So the court can evaluate if it matters or not, if that makes sense. So, um, have you seen the audio where Amber admits to Johnny she got the TRO because her lawyer said to get it so he couldn't evict her and her friends? I did. Is that in the audio from when they're in San Francisco? There's something in there, but I don't remember it for 100% sure. So um, anyway. I'm going to try to get to just a few more. If I didn't get to all the super chats, I apologize. I try to make that. I don't know if I did well enough at making that clear at the beginning. I will try to get to them, um, but I know I'm not going to get to them all before I have to wrap up. Question, what role do proffers play? I know that I got that one. Um, Case Cass or Casey Cass, this has been healing for me. I was raised, I was raised parent with BPD, and it was the first time I was able to see the abuse wasn't from something is flawed in me. Abu- look. For all of you, abuse is not your fault. You, none of you, none of you have done anything wrong to be abused. It is about the other person and something that is broken in them, not you. Get all of you deserve support and love and healing. All of you. Um, and it, it makes me sad too, because a lot of abusers, and this is something I saw in court as well, are also very broken by people that have done horrible things to them. It's not an excuse, but it is often a circumstance and it is hard and it is difficult stuff, but there are so many people out there doing the work to help you forgive yourself and to heal because you have survived and you deserve to thrive. All of you deserve a life that you love, even if horrible shit has happened. All of you. D civic said abusive family life with yelling and belts. And the next day it never happened with parents saying, move on. Is this 
part of mental disorders. I don't know. It never seemed normal to me, but I wonder if this is what Amber does. I don't know. Um, but it is okay to seek experts to help parse that out. Um, if they do go for appeal, will there be a judge who will let the mountain of evidence in this time? I, that's too far down the line. We need to get to the appeal appeals often, um, appeals often lose. So very often, and you can't appeal unless you lose. Can JD go after the media now saying that he has a verdict saying he was defamed and they go in fully say knowing she's lying. It depends on the circumstance, Dominique. I think if people are republishing the allegations as fact, there's room for that. Wasn't the pledge a condition of the divorce settlement though? I don't think it was. I think it's something that she said afterwards. I'm doing this with the divorce settlement. I don't think it was a condition. Glitz and glitter. She did it because she was told her and her friends had 21 days to leave the ECB. There's a recording of her stating that. Um, and the blackmail letter. I remember the blackmail letter and Johnny Depp would have been right to evict them. So maybe that is a part of this. It bugs me that she points to the left side of her face when describing him throwing the phone when the bruise was on the right side of her face. Julie, it's totally fair. It's totally fair. Replay crow here. This is where my problems began. Not even a minute in. This is going to be spicy. <laughs> Emily, not able to get through 20 minutes of video in three hours. Facts. Um, facts, facts, facts. So she said she donated the money in the UK court to prove she wasn't a gold digger. Well, here she said she wanted to prove that she shouldn't, um, to be believed. But the thing is, I don't know. I, I didn't follow the gold digger allegations much. I know that came up on social media again, too, with the, the fall of the money. I really didn't follow it. If people get divorced, they have a right to get divorce settlements. None of that really bothers me. Um, I know there were allegations around this that, some of this was to get a bigger divorce settlement. I just haven't looked at all of the um, stuff that didn't come into court around that. It was implied in court, but I know there's more around that. I have not looked at it. Uh, D said as a victim who took it out on myself was once told stop hurting yourself because of what others have done to you. Those words changed my life and I left him and never looked back. D, thank you for sharing the words of wisdom that resonated with you with everyone. Stop hurting yourself because of what others have done to you. That's a very, very good piece of advice. Um, and thank you, you guys. Thank you so much. And a huge thank you and lots of love to our mods. Sorry, my nose is getting itchy because Without the mods, you know, they absolutely help enforce my rules. And so many of you law nerds and even new law nerds are like, oh, this is how we do it here. We are welcome if you're welcoming and we run by don't be a dick and we don't do ad hominem attacks on people. And we have conversations about cases and pop culture and interviews. And this interview was tough um, because a lot of it goes against what we saw in the um, in the court. And that's tough. That's really tough watching someone say, this is what happened. And you're like, it's not though. That's not what we saw happen in court. And so the interview feels like it goes against what, at least what I saw in court and, and what I've seen afterwards. But, you know, you can all decide how you feel about the media giving um, a final say. I don't think we'll see Johnny Depp speak after this. I don't think he should. I think, I think, I think this isn't helpful to Amber Heard and opens her up for more liability. Um, law nerds, thank you for being able to have and engage in difficult conversations. There is no easy way, especially when we're talking about things like cancel culture. I think it's easy to be like, oh, cancel culture sucks. I think it's harder to have a conversation about what do we do? Like, when is, when is it like, Hey, this, this Weinstein thing, this is a real big fucking problem. When do we look at structures of power and go, Hey, these structures of power are harming people. Those are all fair conversations. But also, when do we look at allegations and go, those allegations don't seem to match? And I think what's hard is there is a, a difficulty to have conversation and to have questions without being told, if you have questions, then you're wrong. Or if you have questions, then you're part of some grand conspiracy. And I think that's the hard thing. We've gotten away from the more difficult conversations into, no, just shut up. This is what it is. And I'm seeing a little bit of that from the media with this case too. It's like, you can't have questions. Well, there are still questions and that's fair. So having questions is 
fair. Asking questions is fair. You can ask questions without dehumanizing people. You can ask questions um, coming from a place of genuineness. Um, and that's all very fair. And I think it's also fair when allegations are made to say these are allegations. Let's see what else. Which is why I remind all of the law nerds when we go through every lawsuit that these are the allegations being made in the light most favorable to the party that is bringing them. Because all of it has to bear out over time. And the court process doesn't go as fast as the social process. And that's where you end up with Johnny Depp um, silenced for six years. And the the supporters that were very vocal remind me very much as I'm looking back at this of the early day free Britney supporters that got um, called conspiracy theorists and, you know, crazy and got called all kinds of things. The early free Britney people got told that they were, you know, conspiracy theorists, that they were over reading things, that they were hysterical and what have you. And I think there's a lot of that to be said of those who were very early saying, no, there's something off here. Johnny Depp deserves justice. There were early, early voices in this that bore the brunt of um, backlash. And I know for some doxing and threats and, and other things because they asked questions. Trying to silence those asking questions is always the story that I'm going to look at first. It's like, oh, who's, who's trying to silence who? And what we saw in later Britney Spears filings is that those in the conservatorship were trying to silence those in the free Britney movement. Why? And those are where the questions lie. And that's what I'm going to keep looking at. So with that, we are going to get going. It is time. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you to our wonderful mods. Thank you to the law nerds. Laura coming in late. <laughs> Question, can Johnny Depp get a court order against Amber Heard? I think that they can seek an injunction to stop Amber Heard from reasserting the claims that have been found to be defamatory. I think that will take some time, but I think they can do that. Um, ask Amber who she gave the video to. Are you suing them? <laughs> right? Amber, who leaked the video? Would her injuries not be on the left side if he's right-handed, but her injuries were always on the right side, always? I, I, I hadn't really thought that through. Um, I think there's lots of room for questions. And with that, Lawnards, thank you for being here. Thank you for being Lawnards. Take care of yourself. Take care of others. I will see you for Friday night live. Um, I will also see those of you at the Lawnards community at Lawnards Unite. Um, what time is that? I'm going to go put it up there. We're doing an Ask Me Anything live that will just be over there at 7 p.m. Uh, Central tomorrow night. So that will be up. If you are over at LawnardsUnite.com, that I will put that up. Um, I have not streamed over there yet, so it will be new for all of us, but we're doing an AMA because that was the goal when we hit over 2,000 members at LawnardsUnite.com. So if you want to be over there, you are welcome to join over there. Um, and that's where the I Have Thoughts podcast lives and other, other things. There are tiers. I think the first tier is like $3 a month. So everyone will have access to that. That's over on that platform. I need to go put in what the next uh, milestones are because we've got some other stuff coming up. Thank you for being here. Thank you for being Lawnards. Thank you, thank you, thank you. We will see you soon. I appreciate you. Thank you for riding through the longer, harder conversations about, I guess, today, society and and how we support people and believe them and still not check just all of our critical thinking at the door. And that's an important conversation to keep having and and worth worth having. I think. I hope you think so too. And I will see you in the next one. Bye. Connect with me everywhere. I'm at the Emily D Baker. If you guys want to join the text, just text emily.com. If you want to join the channel, lawnerdsunite.com. Happy to have you support what we do here on the YouTube.